against the Aryan Nuts, 49 but 69 of the series. Arius and the Aryans who derived from him came directly after this time of Miletius and St. Peter the Bishop of Alexandria. Arius flourished during the episcopate of Peter's successor, the Holy Bishop of Alex the Holy Bishop Alexander, who deposed him amid much turmoil with a great concern. For Alexander removed him from office and expelled him from the church and the city as a great evil which had come to the world. They say that Arius was Livyard, but that he had become a presbyter in Alexandria. He presided over the church called the Church of Baucalis. All the Catholic churches in Alexandria, who are under one archbishop and P and presbyter, have been assigned to each particular church to meet in the ecclesiastical needs of the residents whose home, whose homes are near the church, near near each church. These are these are also called cartes and less by the inhabitants of Alexandria. Arius was born during the reign of the great and blessed Emperor Constantine, Constantine, the son of Constantius, in his old age. Constantius was the son of Emperor Valerian, who himself had ruled jointly with Diocletian, Maximian, and the others. Everyone knows that Constantine, the father of Constantius, Constans, and Crispus, was admirable in practice in Christianity and the apostolic and prophetic faith of the fathers, which had not been adulterated in the holy churches until the time of Arius himself, but Arius managed to detach a large number from the church. A spirit of Satan, as scripture says, entered this Arius who was Alexander's presbyter, presbyter and incited him to stir up to the dust against the church, just as no small fire was lit from him, and it cut not nearly, and it cut on early, nearly the whole Roman realm, especially the East. Even to the his sake has not stopped battling against the truth faith. But at the first time, Arius was to all appearances a presbyter, and there were many fellow presbyters of his in the church. There are many churches in Alexandria, including the recently built Caesarium, a city called which was originally the, the Adrianum and later became the Licinian Gymnasium or Palace. But later, in Constantius' time, it was decided to rebuild it as a church. Gregory, the son of Militian, an Arian, began it, and the blessed Asanasius, the father of Orthodoxy, finished it. It was burned in Julian's time and rebuilt by the blessed bishop Asanasius himself. But as, but as I said, there are many others, the one called the Church of Dionysius, and those of Theonas, Pierius, Serapion, Pesaia, Dizia, Medidi, Mendidius, Amianus, and the Church of Baucalis, and the Church Baucalis and others. A presbyter named Colutus served in one of these, Carpones in another, Sarmatas in another, and of a forced Arius, who was in charge of one of these churches. It is plain that each of these caused some discord among the lady by his expositions, when, at the regular services, he thought the people entrusted to his care. Some were inclined to Arius, but ordered to, but ordered to Colutus, ordered to Carpones, ordered to Sarmatas. Each of them responded the scripture differently in his own church. From their preference and high regard for their own presbyter, some people called themselves Colutians and others called, them Ari called themselves Arians. And in, the, and in fact, Colutius too taught some presperfections, but his sake did not survive and was scattered immediately. And if only this were also two of Arius in Saint Vet, or better, unfit, or better, weak feet. For in his letter, uh, for in his later years, he was inspired by vanity to depart from the prescribed, prescribed path. He was unusually tall. He was unusually tall, wore a downcast expression, and was caught up like a guileful serpent, able to steal every innocent heart by his villainous order. So, for he always wore a short cloak 
and a dalmatic was present in his speech and was constantly within souls around by flattery. For example, what he did, what did he do? But learn all uh, seventy virgins and away away from the church at one time. And the word is that he do seven presbyters away and twelve diacons, and his blood immediately spread to the to be shops, for he convinced secondus of Pentapolis and others to be carried carried away with him. But all this but all this went on the in the church without the knowledge of the blessed father Alexander, the bishop until Miletius, the bishop of Egypt for the debate, whom I mentioned, was regarded as an archbishop himself. The affair of Miletius had not yet reached out the, the point of weak and midi. Both by zeal, then he did not differ in faith, only in his soul of so would be righteousness, because of which he did the world a great, great harm himself, as I have explained. Well then, Miletius, the archbishop in Egypt, was supposed to be under Alexander's jurisdiction. Brought to this, uh, brought this to attention of the Archbishop Alexander. As I said, as I have said, Miletius was contemporary with the Blessed Bishop and Mardi Peter. When, when Miletius had given all this information about Arius, how he had departed from the truth, had divine green up many, and had gradually when this converts away on the right faith, the Bishop sent for Arius himself and asked whether what he had been told about him was true. Arius thought neither his intensity nor fear but Bresley got his whole heresy up for the first and his, as his letter so and the investigation of him at the time. And so Alexander called and so Alexander called the presbytery together as Saint or the bishops who were there at the time and held an examination and integration of Arius. But since he would not obey the truth of the truth, Alexander expelled him and declared him outcast in the city. But the virgins we spoke of wear down and way from the faith with him and dead and the and the clergy we mentioned and a good throng and a great throng of his and a great throng and a great throng of others. But two Arians stayed in the city of a long time, the confessor and Martin Meletius immediately died. Arius then destroyed many, many by instig instig instigating schisms and leading everyone as they led her to. Since he had been discovered and exposed in the city and excommunicated, he fled from Alexandria and made his, uh, his way to Palestine, and on his arrival, he approached his bishop with warning and flattery in the hope, in the hope of gaining many supporters, and some received him while others rebuffed him. Otherwise, this came to the ears of the Bishop Alexander and he wrote encyclical letters to each bishop which are still preserved by the scholarly about the seventy in all. He wrote at once to Eusebius in Caesarea, he was alive, and to Macarius of Jerusalem, Asclepius in Gaza, Longinus in Ascalon, Marcinus in Jamnia, and others, and in Phoenicia to Zeno, a senior bishop in Tyre, and others, along with the bishops in Sole, Syria. When the letters have been, se have been sent reproving those who had received Arius, each bishop replied to the blessed Alexander with his explanation, and some wrote deceitfully, others truthfully, some explaining that they had not received him, others that they had received him in ignorance, and others that they had done had, that they had done it to win him to a hospitality. And this is a long story. Later, when Arius found that letters had been sent from the had sent to the bishops everywhere, and that afterwards he was turned away from every door every dog and none, but his sympathy teachers would take him to in any more. For the, for the elder is a new bishop of Nicomedia, Eusebius was a sympathy teacher of his, to, of his together with Lucius his college in Nicomedia, and so was Leontius the ethnic in, in Antioch, who had not yet been entrusted with, with the Eusebius command, and certain others. Since of all the, since all the, 
since all of them belong to the same noxious brotherhood, Absarius sheltered him for some time, and so at that time, this Aris wrote and address letters, address letters full of all sorts of foolishness, which contain the whole of his heretical creed to Absarius in Nicomedia, this before he had come to him in Nicomedia, putting in them no more than what he, what he really thought. I feel obliged to over one of them, he of them here, which has come, which has come into my hands, so that the readers can see that I have either said nor am saying anything slanderous against any more. Here is the letter. Greetings, in the Lord from Arius, unjustly persecuted by Pope Alexander, from all conquering truth of which you are to, which of which you are, uh, which which you two are the vader to the most beloved men of God, the faithful and orthodox master of Sebius. And my father Ammonius is arriving in Nicomedia, it seems to me reasonable and proper to address you through him, at the same time recalling you characteristic love and kindly disposition toward the Britain for the sake of God and his Christ. For the bishop is harassing and persecuting us evilly, and stirring up every sort of evil against us, so that he has driven us from the city as godless men because we do not agree with his public declaration. Always God, always a son, together with the Father, a son. The son coexists with God with ori without origination, ever begotten, begotten with origination. Not by thought of a moment of time in God we pray to, to the Son, but there is ever a God, ever a Son, the Son from God Himself. And as your brother in Caesarea, Ephesius, and Theodotus, Paulinus, Asanasius, Gregory, Atheus, and all the bishops in the, in the East say that God is prior to the Son with a beginning, they have, cap, they have become anathema except from the inorganic sectarians Philogonius, Hellenius, Hellenicus and Margarius, some of whom say that the Son is, a, is an erotation and others an uncreated emanation. And to this, and to this impetus, we cannot even listen, not if the sectarians treated us with a thousand deaths. But what is it that we say in belief and that we have taught and teach that the sun is not is not un, that the sun is not uncreated or in the respect part for any uncreated thing or made of anything previously existent. He was brought into being by the will of by the will and counsel of God before all times and become and, and become all ages as begotten as unbegotten God in the fullest sense and unterrible and because he was begotten created, determined, or established, uh, he did not exist. For, but we are pre persecuted because we have said, the Son has a beginning, but God is without beginning. We are also persecuted, persecuted because we have said, he is made from nothing, but we have said it in the sense that he is not part of God of man or made from any, of anything previously said existent. Is it, is it is for this reason that we are persecuted, the rest you know. I, f I pray for your good heart in the Lord, my true fellow Lucianus Exavius, by man be, be mindful and of my afflictions. Moreover, I subjoin on it, I subjoin another, I subjoin another letter written, written in support to self-defense from Nicomedia by Arius to get the most holy Pope Asanasius and sent by him to Alexandria. Once again, it is filled an incomparable, in incomparably worse degree with the blessed various ex expression of his spirit this the letter. Greetings in the Lord from Presbyters, from greetings in the Lord from the Presbyters and the Akans, the blessed Pope and Bishop Alexander. Our faith we have received from our forefathers and learned from you as well, be, and blessed Bob is as follows. We know that one God, the only ingenerate, the only eternal, who alone is without beginning, only is the true God, 
who alone has immortality, alone is wise, alone good, and alone sovereign, alone judge, with the governance and call of all, and care of all, immutable and unterrible, just and good, the Lord of the law and prophets, and of, and of the New Testament. That this God has begotten an only Son before eternal times, and through Him has made the ages and the rest. He has begotten him in appearance, but in truth and brought him into being, immutable and unterrible by his by his own will, God's perfect not God's perfect creature, but not like say but not like any other creature. An offspring, but not like any offspring, and not emanation, as Parentinus believed the father's offspring to be, nor as man represented the offspring as a essential part of the Father, not like Sabellians, who divide in the unity, say son Father, as Hirakas Hira calls him, like kindled, from a like or a lamb become two, now priorly existent and later generated or created anew a son. You yourself, blessed Pope, have you often publicly denounced those who give these explanations in the church and assembly, but as we say, he is a son created by the will of God before the times and ages who has received his life, being in glory from the Father, the Father subsisting together with him, for, for by giving him inheritance of all things, the Father did not deprive himself of his position of ingenuity in himself, for he is the source of all. Thus, there are three entities, a Father, a Son, and a Holy Spirit, and God, who is the cause of all, is the soul and only being without beginning. But the Son, who was begotten of the Father to not in time, and who was created and established before the ages, did not exist before his begetting, but was alone brought into being before all things by the Father alone, not in time. Nor he nor is he eternal or co eternal and co uncreated with the Father. Nor he, nor does he have a, nor does he have a being simultaneous with the fathers, as some speak of things which are naturally related to something else, thus introducing two uncreated things. But God is before all, as a unit and the first principle of all things, and thus he is also before Christ, as we have learned from you when you have preached publicly in the church. Thus, in death. The Son has his being from God, who has provided him with life, glory, and all things. God, in his, God is his first cause, for God is his ruler, as is God, and prior to him in existence, because the Son originates from him. And if out of the belly I come forth from the Father, and I am come, are taken by some to mean that he is part of a co-essential God, and an emanation, the Father must be composite, divisible, and mutable, and in their opinion, the incorporeal God has a body and, given the premises, is subject to the consequences and corporality. We pray for your good health in the Lord, bless Pope Arius, Aetales, Aicha, Achilles, Carpones, Sar Sarmatas, Arius, Presbyters, Diadiacans, Ephesus, Lucius, Julius, Menas, Heladius, Gaius, the Bishop, Sec the Bishop Secundus of Pentapolis, Theonas of Libya, Pistus, the Bishop of the Arias, was secreted for Alexandria. Now that now that matters had been stirred up in this way, Alexander wrote to the em to the Emperor Constantine, and the blessed Emperor summoned Arius and certain bishops and interrogated them, but with the support of his co-religionists, Arius at, at, first deni at first denied the charge before the emperor, while inwardly hatching the plot against the church. And after summoning him, the blessed Constantine, as though to some degree inspired by the Holy Spirit, addressing him, saying, I trust in God that if you are holding something back and denying it, the Lord of all has the power of to, has the power to confound you speedily, especially since it is by him 
that you have sworn. Hence, Arius was indeed caught holding by the same opinions and was exposed before the emperor. But he made a similar denial again, and many of his defenders petitioned the emperor for him to Eusebius of Nicomedia. But meanwhile, the emperor removed its seal and wrote a long secular against Arius and his creed to the whole Roman realm, filled with all sorts of wisdom and truthful sayings. It is the preferred among the scholarly and begins the most high, the most high Augustus Constantine to Arius and the Arians. A bad expositor is in very truth the image and representation of the devil. Then, after some other remarks and after giving a long refutation of Arius from the sacred scripture, he also indignantly directed a line from Homer against him and quoted it. I, and I feel that I must quote it he, I must quote it here as well. It goes, Come now, Ares Arius, there is a need for seals. Do this not, we pray, that Aphrodite's speech restrain thee. Arius wished to be received back into the church in Constantinople, and Eusebius pressed for this and had great influence with the emperor and kept pray pestering the bishop of Constantinople at the time. The bishop did not wish to be in the same fellowship with Arius or enter into communion with him, and was tough and grown. But Eusebius said, If you won't do it by your own choice, he'll come in with, be in with me tomorrow at the dawn of the last day, and what can you do about it? That most pious and God-fearing bishop, Alexander, Bishop of the best of cities, here and the bishop in Alexandria had the same name, spent the whole spent the whole day after he had that and the night in groans and mourning, bright praying and beseeching God either to take this life so that he would not be polluted by communion with Arius, or to work some wonder. And his prayer was answered. Arius went out at night from the need to relieve himself went to the privy, sat down in the stall in, in the stalls inside, and suddenly burst and spied. Thus he was overtaken and surrendered his life in a smelly place, just as he had bled out of a dirty heresy. When this was over the emperor felt concerned for the church, because by now may by now many members often differed with one another and there were many schisms. He therefore convened an ecumenical council in the names of 318 bishops and preserved to this day. They condemned Arius Crete in the city of Nicaea and confessed the Orthodox and unswearing Crete for the, of the fathers, which had been handed down to us from the apostles and prophets. After the bishops had signed this and condemned the insane Arian sect, peace was restored. They passed written ecclesiastical canons at the council besides, at the same, and at the same time decreed with regard to the Passover that there must be one anonymous concord in the celebration of God's holy and most excellent day. For it was variously observed by people, some kept it early, some between the dispute, disputed dates, but others late, and in a word, there was a great deal of controversy at the time, but through the blessed Constantine, God directed the right ordering of these things for the sake of peace. After Arius, after Arius had been condemned and they and this misex taken Alexander died at the same the same year after Achilles had succeeded him, but Theodas was consecrated to by Miletians. And the blessed Athanasius succeeded Achilles after he had been bishop for three months, Athanasius was Alexander's deacon at the time, and had been sent by him to court. As Alexander did approach, he had ordered that, uh, that the episcopate be, be conferred at on Athanasius. But the custom at, at, at Alexandria is that the consecrators do not delay after the death of a bishop. The consecration is held at once for the sake of peace to avoid conflicts among the laity with some with some for one candidate and some for another. Since Athanasius was not there, they were forced to consecrate Achilles, 
but the throne belonged to the person called by God and designated by the blessed Alexander, and the priesthood was prepared for him. Just as Anasius arrived and was consecrated, he was very much a zealot for the faith and a protector of the church, and by now there were schismatic services everywhere, and a splinter group of laity formed by the so-called militians for the reason I gave in my peace on Militius, and is and his desire in his desire to achieve the unification of the church as Athanasius accused, Christian, Armonist, and no one would and no one would listen. This was the reason for all the intrigues and plots against him, the extremity of his God given zeal. And so he was subjected of two banishments too, because of his excommunication by the Arians with highly unjust secular power. But enough about the blessed Athanasius. His story has been told in full detail in the above description of Militius. Now Arius was infused with the power of devil and worked his tongue against the, his own master with shameless impudence originally for his supposed desire to expound the words of, of Solomon in his prophets. The Lord created me a beginning of his ways. Before the age, he set me up in the beginning, before he made the earth, before he, he made the depths, before the springs of waters came forth, before the mountains were settled, before all hills he begot me. This became the introduction of his hero. Neither, neither he himself nor his disciples were sent to call the creator of all things, the word begotten of the Father, with a beginning and not in time, a creator. But then, on the basis of this one passage, he directed his malignant, in, his malignant mind into many evil paths, he himself and his successors, and they set out to utter ten thousand blasphemies and more against the Son of God and the Holy Spirit, they broke the front, as it were, and concord of the Holy, Orthodox faith and church, turned not by their own power of wisdom. They deluded people who were who were, truly, who were truly inclined to join with them were few, but many gradually came, it came in from hypocrisy, and, made, and many, besides, were forced into communion with them because they had no way, no way to resist, and no one of sound faith was there again. But the carelessness of the faithful first, and the protection of emperors. The beginning came with the Emperor Constantius, who was a meek and good man in all others in all other respects, and who as the son of a great as the son of the great and perfect Constantine, with his pity and unwavering observance of the right faith, was pious himself and good in ma in many ways. But he was mistaken only in this matter, his failure to follow the faith of his fathers, not by his own fault, but because of those who will give account at the day of judgment the bishops in appearance, so called by characters of by characters of God's true faith. This must give account both the faith and both the persecution of the church and many wrongs and murders that have been committed in the churches because of them and for the vast numbers of laity who still today are suffering affliction under this open sky. And for Constantius of Blessed, and more himself to who, since he did not know the Orthodox faith, was led astray with them, and, he did, and his ignorance deferred to them as priests. So, for, for he was not aware of the error of the blindness, of the blindness and heresy in them, which was caused by the devil's plot. Secondly, the gang of snakes gained further strength to Ephdoxius who roam his way into the confidence of the most pious and God-loving emperor Valens and, once again, corrupted his ear. The reason they could maintain the position was Valens' baptism by Ephdoxius. Otherwise, they would have been refuted long ago even by women and kids, never mind the more mature who understand all the exact terms of godliness and rightful and right faith, but, but even by anyone with any partial glimmer of understanding of the truth, and since they were refuted by the ancients, they would have been heralded as blasphemers of the Master, 
a second killer of the Lord and despisers of the divine protection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But by the Emperor's patronage, there is his protection of them that are in the ascendant, so as to put into effect effective effect so as so as to put into effect all the wrongs that have been that have been are, and are still being done by them at Alexandria, Nicomedia, Mesopotamia and Palestine under the patronage of the same current emperor. Uh, all the rest of the teachings are contrived for this verse in the Proverbs. The Lord created me the beginning of his ways for his works, and they gather every, every, every possible agreement and equivalent to this text from the scriptures and everything that could be in accord with it, although neither the text it is it, neither the text itself nor the other passages say anything of their thought about the divinity of the Son of God. All the same, anything like this, anything like this, the text in the apostle receive ye the high priest of your profession, who is faithful to him that made him, and the one in John's gospel, he it is, he it is of whom I said unto you that he that comes after me hath come into being before me, and the one in Acts, be it be known unto all unto all your house of Israel that God hath made this Jesus whom ye crucified, but called, but Lord and Christ, and all the like this, wherever they find some text of not, they collect it as a defense against their fools. For they are indeed fools and conspirators. Let God arise and let his foes be scattered. Might well have been written of them and their kind. They appear to be members of our household. There is nothing worse than foes of one's own, own household. For a man's foes are all the men of his household, and this too probably applies to them. For they live up like savage dogs to repel this, their foes and say, What do you say of the Son of God? For these are these devices for introducing their portion to the simple. To the simple. And what more can this be added? And what more can there be after this? After one calls him the Son of God, you folks. Who you who are in wise of your own eyes and prudent in the sight and give the appearance of knowledge ability, what more can one add to the name of the name of Jesus other than to say that he is the reason of the Father and not different from him? Then, after the scornfully jump right foot, then they then scornfully jump right up and say, How can he be of God? And if you ask them, isn't he, the, isn't he the son? They confess the sonship in him, but deny in the, but deny it in false and meaning, and simply want to call him a bastard, not a real son. For he, for if he is, for if he is God, and they say, and if God has, and if God as it were beget, were begot a son from himself, and from his actual substance or his own essence, well. Then his word or was cut or expanded or contracted in the beginning, in the beginning him or underwent some physical suffering. And they are simply ridiculous to compare their own characteristics with God and draw a parallel between God and themselves. There can be nothing of the kind in God. God is spirit and has begotten the only begotten of himself invariably, inconceivably and spotlessly. If he is if he is of his sense then they say, Why does he know the day of the hour as he says, but of that day or that hour not no man, neither the angels, neither the son, but the father only, and if he is of the father, how could he become flesh? How could that nato which cannot be contained put on flesh if by nato he were of the father? And if they do not know how they are gathering these calculations together to their own shame. For if he took flesh and suffered and was crucified in it because he was different from the father's essence, they should tell us with other spiritual beings than flesh even to the work creatures. For they cannot help admitting that the Son is superior to all. Even if they call him a creator, they admit that 
he is superior to all his creatures. Indeed, they want to flatter him as though they, as though they were doing him a favor, as true as though they were staking him with one hand while out, but anointing, but anointing him with the with the other. For they wish to make this concession to him as true by his own choice and say, we call him a creature, but not like any other creator, a product of creation, but not like any other product, and of and of and an offspring, but not like any of any other offspring. This is to deprive him. This is to deprive him of the beginning, which by nature is proper to him by saying, "Not like any other offspring," and declare him a true creature by saying, "Not like any other creature." Whatever a creature may be, whatever the creature may be, it is a creature, even though its name is a number of times more exalted is more exalted it is just the same of as all creatures the sun cannot be a creator just like a rock even though it is brighter than the rest now because the moon outshines the stars is it from the reason not one of the creatures behold all things are thy servants but the only begotten is truth and his word is true and as he said if you continue in my word Ye are truly my disciples, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if his word is truth, and frees the soul whom he sets free, how much more if how much more is he himself free, since he is truth, and sets his believing servants free. For all things are his servants, and his fathers, and the Holy Spirit. Then again they say, How could he come in the flesh if he was of the Father's essence. Is it not true that angels who are his servants have not taken flesh, archangels, horse, or the other spiritual beings? But they say to that the spirit is even more inferior and is the creator of a and is the creator of a creator, since he is the product of the world. Why did the spirit not take the flesh man? Since on Argus premises he can have a face more changeable than the sons, but since the son was the father's wisdom, he consented by his own perfection to assume a weakness so that all salvation would come to the world to him. But people who turn goods who turn good things to bad are ungrateful, ungrateful, unwise, insulters, and blasphemers of the our master. And whatever else they say, in the last analysis they mean it they mean it as a detraction of him. If he was of the father's essence, why was he why was he hungry? Scripture says Scripture says too that God shall not hunger out of thirst, nor is there any finding out of his counsel. But Cash was hungry and thirsty. But did why did he tire from his journey and sit down when scripture says that God shall not weary, and did, and why did not and why did he say, the Father that hath sent me is greater than I, the sender is one person, the sender another, and it is plain that the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Father. We do we do not we do not talk like Sabellius, we who says who says that he is the Son Father. If he had not said another. Another is she that another is she that has sent me, and I go to my God and your God unto your father and my unto your unto my father and your father, and the, the disciples would have believed that he himself was the father. This is why he said, "My God," but he said, "But he said your God," because his disciples were begotten only by grace and not by nature or for the sense of God. This is why he said, your father, to them. But people who say such things are just crack. If, if he is called the son in, the, in name only, and is not the son by nature, he is not different from all the other creatures, even if he is of superior rank. Because, of, because the emperor outranks his governors and generals, 
this does not mean that he does not have the same limitations as the rest and is not the, the fellow servants, servant of the same creation since he is mortal just as he subject here and because the sun surpasses the other stars and the sun and the moon does to an extent this does not mean that they are not heavenly bodies subordinate to God and subject to ordinance of the one created maker the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and because, and because angels surpass the visible creatures and in comparison with the rest are the greatest of all for they were created, created invisible enjoy the supreme privilege of serving God with continual hymns are immortal beggars to to not by nature and yet have been forced of another immortality by him who in himself is life and immortality all this does not mean that they do not serve with fear and time being accountable and answerable to the holy godhead and subject to his body and command this will help us understand the exact nature of the truth we are after to say so on, to say so on, but, but say it without considering him a son in name only but say that the son is an is a son by nature let us do why are called sons without being sons by nature but our real sons are called too the work to only be given of us and he and if he was only called a son as indeed all have been, all have been called sons of god he is not different from the rest and why is he worshipped as god on Agus premises, all the other things that have been given, the title of sons should be worshipped, since they are termed sons of God. But this is not truth. The truth at all times knows all one only begotten son of God, whom all things have and worship, and to whom every knee shall bow of things, of things in heaven, and things in head, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and even the and even and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of the Father. But neither is the Holy Spirit equivalent to the other spirits, since the Spirit of God is alone, a spirit that proceeds from the Father and receives of, of the Son. Arians, though make him a creator of creature, for they say all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that has that was made therefore they say the holy spirit is a creator too since all things were made by him and those who have lost their own souls for no good reason do not know that created things created beings are one thing that uncreated beings father son and holy spirit one god trinity in truth and unity in oneness are another this is the reason that god is one they are not to fathers or to sons or to Holy Spirit and to Holy Spirits, and the Son is not different from the Father but begotten of Him. And the Holy Spirit is not different, but the Son is only begotten without beginning and, in, and not in time. The Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit, as the Father Himself, as the only begotten now, is neither begotten nor created nor alien to the Father and Son. He anointed Christ with the Holy Spirit. If the if the Holy if the only begotten is Himself anointed with the Holy with the Spirit, who can bring a charge against the Holy Trinity? Then again, the insane Arius says, "Why did the Lord say, Why calls me the good? What is good, God? As though Himself denying His one good as as though He as though Himself denying His own goodness." Because they are soulless and fleshly, and descend by the Holy Spirit in the void of Him, and lack the gift of the Holy Spirit which gives, which gives wisdom to all, they do not know God's power and goodness, or to the, or the dispensations, or the dispensation of God's wisdom. Again, says Arius, the son of the sons of Zebedee asked him to their mother, if one of them might sit at his right and one at his left in his kingdom, and he told them, Ye know not what he asked. Are ye able to drink the cup that I shall drink of? And where they said, Ye, he said unto them, 
is a drink of my cup, but to sit on my right hand of my left is not give is not mine to give, but is from the it, but is for but is for them, for whom it is prepared for of the Father. Then the apostle says, God raised him from the dead, as though he needed someone to raise him, and it says the, in the gospel according to Luke. There appeared an angel the Lord sent to him when he was in agony and his sweat and his sweat was at, was was as it were drop of blood when he went out to pray before his betrayal at the gate of the cross he said Eli Eli lama sabachthani that is my god my god where hast thou forsaken me and do you see and do you see says Agus, how he is in need of help but as to his words, I am the I am in the Father, and the Father in me decide where to are one, and they also may be one. And do you see, he says, that we too shall be one as the Father and the Son are one. Thus he is not speaking of oneness by nato, but of a oneness of concord. But not only this, they also deny that he has received a human soul and do so deliberately. For they confess that he has two flesh from Mary, and everything human except from a, for a soul. Thus, when you hear of this hunger, this weariness, joining, sweat, sleep of anger, sleep of anger, and say that he needed this because of humans, because of his human nature, and they, they will tell you about afterwards the flesh. Does not do does not do these things of itself unless it has a soul, and in fact this is true. What can this mean? They say, except that his divine nature has needs, so that when they say that his divine nature had needs, they can declare that he is alien and different from his father's two essence and nature. I believe, however, that from one, two, or five of the poorly chosen refuted. And exploded proof text, I can make the whole of their feeling live plain to everyone who has understanding. And since the whole truth is proclaimed and plainly confirmed in the faith in the faith of orthodoxy, I trust that even if they cite a million other texts besides this country expositions, the Arians will stand convicted in the eyes of those people who give godly good sense. For since they mean the same. Most of this will be refuted in the refutation of the few, of the of the few. And I shall start my argument first with the place where Arius began the evil planting of the bitter root, the word of the words of Solomon. The Lord created me the beginnings of His ways for His works, and scriptures now now were confirmed. Now did. Now did any apostle ever mention this text to apply it to the name of Christ? Thus the Lord is not speaking of the Son of God at all, if, even if he says, I wisdom have given counsel and knowledge a home, and, hi, and, I, and I have summoned judgment. How many wisdoms are loosely called gods, God, called gods? But there is one only begotten, and he is not given that name katas, kata, katachristically, but in truth. For all things are God's wisdom, and whatever is from God is wisdom. But the unique super wisdom is something else. There is the only begotten, he who is called wisdom, not loosely but in truth, he who is always with the Father, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. But the poor man's wisdom is despised, and since in the wisdom of God the world knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of the gospel to save them that they believe. And God has made foolish the wisdom of this world. And God gave to Solomon an heart like the sand of the sea, and made him wiser than the sons of Anna. And God gave, and God gave wisdom to Bezalel, and God filled Uri with wisdom. And there is a great deal to say about wisdom. Where is the place of understanding, and where can wisdom be found? Even though the renowned wisdom says, I wisdom. Have given counsel and knowledge a home, and I have summoned a judgment. By me kings reign, and to me princes are great rulers. Uh, rulers ride righteousness, and the sports possess the earth. 
I love them that love me, and they that seek me shall find me. Wealth and glory are mine, and the possession of many goods and righteousness. I walk in the way of righteousness, I, I, and I treat the mics, the midst of rightful right pets, the person substance to them that love me and fill their treasures with goods. If I tell you inside incidents of each day, I shall remember to recount the happenings for everlasting. The Lord created me the beginning of His ways for His works. Before the age, He established me in the beginning, before He made the earth and, bro- and before He made the deeps, before fountains of water came forth, before mountains were founded, and before all His, He began me, and so on. Even so, since there are some who want to dispute the passage, all opponents who will obviously reply by citing them, by citing the term wisdom and the circle to it, the Lord created me together with I wisdom have given counsel home. See here, they will say, wisdom gave her own name at the altar's end, as she went in order, in, indicated herself when he when she said, the Lord created me. She she say, she says, I wisdom above and below, she says, I tell you the happenings of each day, I, I shall remember to recount the days for everlasting. And what does he mean by the happenings of everlasting? The Lord created me the beginning of his ways. I have said that many things which are loosely termed wisdoms have been, have been given by God from time to time, since God does all things with wisdom. But there is one true wisdom of the Father, the subsistent divine word. For the word wisdom itself by no means compels me to speak of the Son of God. Scripture did not make that clear, nor did any the apost- nor did any of the apostles mention it, and not the gospel either. But if it were taken of the Son of God, the word in itself is not the same as Son, as does not lend itself to an immediately immediate judgment as to whether it means son son at this point. For the book is entirely proverbs, and nothing in the prophet has the same meaning that it is really does, it is described verbally in one way. But intended allegorically with another meaning. If Solomon says this, however, and some venture to apply it to the Son of God, never. The word the word is not a reference to his Godhead. But if it can be applied to he, to Christ's human nature for wisdom has built her house, and if it can therefore be purely spoken in the person of Christ's human nature, as though his as though his human nature were, not, were saying, The Lord created me of his Godhead, at least the Lord built me in Mary's womb. As the beginning of his ways for his works, then wisdom might indeed mean then wisdom might indeed mean son here. For the beginning of the ways of Christ descend into the world is to is the body he took for Mary in his work of righteousness salvation and salvation. But some crack brain some crack brain who is struck with the rightful club and had enmity and has enmity for the Son of God in his heart will be sure to rush forward and say, he said, he said, if I tell you the incidents of each day, I shall remember to recount the happiness for everlasting. And you see that he says, for from everlasting, but according to Matthew, God's, incarn- God's incarnation came after seventy-two generations. How can from everlasting be said by human nature? And those who have strayed entirely off the God of the truth do not realize that Whatever the sacred scripture wishes to teach, if it is beginning and exposition, it does not go straight to the oldest data, and, as it were, the main point but begins with the events, the, the, the events nearest at hand, in order to show of loss of, of, to show loss of all kind first. But this is what it said, if I tell you the incidents of each day, first afterwards, I shall also recount the things for from everlasting. So, so God sought Moses the burning bush, first the burning bush first, and the vision in the first instance was that of a bush on fire. 
and an angel spoke to him immediately, but later the Lord spoke to him from the bush. But Moses did not ask him to take off about what he had seen, but inquired about things in the distant past. For God said, Come, I send thee to the children of Israel, and thou shalt say unto them, The God of God, the God of your fathers has sent me, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, naming Abraham and the others five or six generations before Moses. And since he had said, The God of your fathers, he understands, he he declared he had declared something ancient to him. But Moses with God given understanding was not asking about this uh, was not asking about this but about something even more ancient if I go unto them and they say to me what is what is his name I shall it say I shall so what shall I say about unto them and they revealed his name I am he who is and he, and he had begun first the things nearest in time, but last of all revealed what ha what was better in, in the past. Look to begin. Look to begins with all. With look to begins with things that are later and nearest in time. And Jesus began to be about thirty years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, the son of Eli, the son of Masan, the son of Nathan, the son of David the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Abraham, the son of Nahor, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Enoch, the son of Seth, the son of God, the, the son of Adam, the son of God. And you see how he spoke of the incarnation first and the, and the things he says first. And so when Matthew in the fleshly genealogy wish to remind people of Christ's human nature, he did not say once the birth of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham. He said the son of David first, and then the son of Abraham, indicating the site most later seen and the most recent happening, and then only and then one still further in the past to show the dispensability of what is still higher above all creation. And so, when the blessed John came and found people preoccupied with Christ's human nature on earth with the Ebionites gone wrong because of Matthew's stretching of Christ's earthly genealogy from Abraham and Luke and Luke's carrying of it back to Adam and the Corinthians and Merinthians saying that he was conceived sexually as, mer as a mere man and the Nazareans and many other sects John, as though coming along behind them, he was the fourth evangelist, began to recall with them from their wandering as it were, and their preoccupation with Christ coming below. As though following behind, seeing that some were pointed towards rough, steep paths and had left the strike to God, he began as it were to say to them, Where are you headed? Where are you going? You are who you are taking the love, the love God full of struggles and leading to a pit that isn't so. Turn back. The divine what begotten of the Father on high does not take the only of a Mary. He is not from the time of Joseph, he betrothed. He, he, he is not from the type of Seal, Tiel, Zegu, Babel, David, Abraham, Jacob, Noah, and Adam. In the beginning was the world. Was in the beginning was the word, and the word was it God, and the word was God. The word was followed by was, and followed by another was, at midst of no was not. And you see, first of all, how scripture gave the most recent event at once, how Matthew showed the way with the genealogy and still did not give all the precise facts himself, though he certainly carried the genealogy into the past. And Mark described the events in the world, a voice cry in the wilderness, and the Lord who was well taught, who was well taught by the prophets and law, and Luke tells him from the most recent times back to early, back to the earliest, but later John coming forth by the calling touch many verse, and the perfection of the order on high and the eternal Godhead. In the same way Solomon in his proverb first indicated the beginning of the ways 
if indeed some may wish to say with pity that since his Godhead itself had made the flesh and human nature as the beginning of his ways for his works of man's salvation in his own goodness his incarnate self since it says itself of his of God's Godhead the Godhead itself found, founded the house and immediately afterwards as the topic develops says he founded me in the beginning was the son of God really created and let establish in his divine nature the clever fox the observers of heaven had been tell me that the art of which wisdom was created the to which which is what which it was established but if it but if it is allowable even to conceive of it let us flee from such profound blasphemy to keep our hands off the divine nature of the only begotten which is always with the father and has been begotten of him for the lord was the word always with the father always wisdom always of god always god of god and not superior like always deriving his being from the father and always the and always truth and life why and why should i was and why should i say so much about this she then says he established me in the beginning the godly can therefore see that here he means the human soul for the in, for the incarnate human nature says the lord created me if indeed it should be taken in this way he established however should be taken in the sense that he was established in the soul but before all hills he begot me it meant that is meant to show that his begetting is from on high and i have said these things by no means to insist on them but as a default way of understanding the passage as a reference to the human nature even though i must speak in this way no one can ever make me say that this passage refers to christ but it but it if is to be said of christ there indeed it's in its meaning not obtained by guesswork in accord with the pity of the thought so as not to attribute any deficiency to the son or suppose that he has a godhead which is inferior to the father's essence for some of for, for some of our fathers and orthodox and indeed we must speak in this way of the lord created me and established me have interpreted this have interpreted this by taking by taking it of the human nature and because this is and because this is a pure thought many important fathers have taught it and if one should not wish to accept the teaching of the orthodox on this point he will not be he will not be compelled to anyway and it will do no harm to those who are strangers to the faith and pagans for neither will the fact that christ suffered for us inter any deficiency in the son his godhead is free from suffering and is always with the father christ suffered with whatever he suffered and was not changed in nature his godhead returned in its impassibility thus he will of his own god god please good pleasure to suffer for humanity since godhead was impossible in itself cannot suffer he took out possible since he is wisdom consented to suffering in it taking our sufferings upon him in the flesh accompanied by the godhead for the godhead does not suffer will not suffer for how how can the one who said i am the life die god remains impossible but shares the sufferings of the flesh so that even though godhead does not suffer the suffering may be counted as the god has and so suffer and our salvation may be in god the suffering is in the flesh that we may have that a possible but an impossible work god who counts the suffering as his own not of necessity but by his own choice but anyway neither have these people examined the hebrew expressions or found out or understood what they meant and yet they have truly and yet they will have they have willfully and rashly risen up as deadly force looking for a chance to mutilate the feet of themselves rather for they can mutilate the truth and since they have found the lord created me 
directly to him as though they were having hallucinations, being many kind things that are of no use and disturbing of and disturbing the world. This is not what the Hebrew means, and so Akira says, The Lord got me. Men who have sight children always says, I have gotten a son. But neither did Akira render the, the meaning I have gotten a son implies something new. But in God but in God there can be nothing new. Even if one confessed that the son has been begotten of the father and not created, he was begotten without time and without beginning. For there can be no time between father and the son, or there will be some time previous to the sons. For if all things are made to him, so are the times. But if but if there is a time before him, so is before all, how can there be? But if there but if there is, then we shall need another son to whom the time before the son has been made. And there are many things which led which led into endless perplexity the minds of those of those people who are always busy but do not but do nothing good. In the Hebrew it says Adonai means the Lord, Kanani which can be rendered but hatch me and got me in the in the strict in the strictest sense. However however it means hatch me and and which and which hatling is not begotten from the substance for the substance of its begetter. And here, among bodily creatures, the young are produced by the pairs of male and female, from men to cattle, birds, and the all and all the rest. And so, since the only begotten was in all respects the Father's wisdom and wit to do all things for our creation, for our creation, so that no one would form a false notion of Him and be deprived of the truth, He was not conceived from a man's seed. When he when he was made when he made his home in the human race, when he was truly born of a woman lay and lay in the virgin's womb during the period of gestation, otherwise his birth in the flesh might have required bearing and sexual conquest, but he took flesh only from this from his mother and yet and yet made his human nature complete in his own image, not deficient but true human nature. And his not, and his not being, of a man seed, did not make him deficient. He to whom all things belong took belong, took all things in their perfection, flesh, sinews, veins, and everything else, a soul truly and not in appearance, a mind, and all other human characteristics except for, except for sin, as scripture says, he was in all points tempted as a man apart from sin. Thus, by being born in the flesh here simply of a murder, perfectly, perfectly man and without defect, he would, show the, he would show those who decide to see the truth and not blind their own minds that on high he has been perfectly begotten of a father, on high without beginning and not in time, and below has been born of a mother only without spot or devil man. But to explain the phrase, Adonai Kanani means the Lord hates me, whatever begets, begets it like. A man begets a man, God begets God, the man physically and God spiritually. And as in the man who begets, so in the man who is begotten of him, the human begetter, who is subject to suffering, begets his own son, and the impossible God begot the son who was, begot, who was begotten of him without suffering. Begot, begot him truly, not in him, not begot, begot him truly, and not in the appearance of himself, and not from outside, and not from outside himself. Impossible spirit, impossible begetting spirit, impossible God, impossible begetting very God. For if he created all things himself, and you admit Arius that God had has created all things, then he also begot the Son himself. But if you say if he be God, he suffered in begetting. He will say that to you that if you, if he suffered in begetting, he died from creating. But all that he wills, he has simultaneously perfected in himself. The Godhead will not bring suffering on the Son, or the Son, and the process of creation. Nor can the Godhead be conceived as of a suffering because it's spotless, 
begetting of the Son. For the Father is unchangeable, the Son is unchangeable, the Holy Spirit is unchangeable, one essence, one Godhead. But you are shocked to ask me, did God beget the Son by willing to, by willing to, or without willing to? And I am not like you, you too will make up, to think any such thing of God. If we got him without willing to, he be got, he be got son unwillingly, and if he got will, and if he be got him willingly, the will be if the will the will became before the son, and be in because of the will there will be a, at least a, a moment of time between the son and the father, but in God there is a, there is no time to will and no will to think. God we got the son neither by willing to nor be thought willing but willing to but we got him in his nature which transcends will for his is the nature of godhead which neither needs a will nor does anything without a will but of it is but of itself possesses possess all things at once and is wanted on of nothing but argues fair friends our still more text always wandering or always wandering over everything and forcing with with unsound arguments not as the sacred text is but as he conceives of it in his unhealthy preoccupation and con control forces and verbal disputes which were which are got for nothing except for his own will and his tubes and he sees on the text where he the lord blessed his disciples and said father grant them to have left in themselves and this is life eternal that they know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent but i have already dealt with all this in my long walk in my long walk on the faith which in my mediocrity and feebleness i have been compared to write about faith at the urgent request of the britain and my have and have called the ancoratus and as with God's with God help with God's help, my pure man was able to gather the truths of God's teaching from every scripture. For an anchor of those who wish to hold on to the holy apostolic and prophetic faith of our fa of, of our fathers, which has been preached in God's holy church from beginning until now, I have set it out clearly for our minds to grasp and be and be certain of so that they will not be seconded by the devil's devices of the mess by, by the seas which by the sex with the bluster have been raised in the world. For the Lord taught his own disciples, if what ye heard have heard from the beginning abide in you, and what ye have heard of and what ye have heard of me abide in you, ye shall abide in me and I in you, and I in the Father, and ye in me. Thus the truth of the, the faith which we have heard from the Lord since the beginning abide in Lord's holy church, and God's holy church and orthodox faith does abide in the Lord, and the Lord, the only begotten, abides in the Father, and the Father in the Son, in the, and we in Him, to, through the Holy Spirit, provided we we become tempers to hold His Holy Spirit, as God's holy apostles said, "Ye are the temple of the Lord of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you." Thus, the Spirit is God. Is that the Spirit is God is God? To God's Holy Spirit, we are called temples if we give His Spirit a home within us. For the Spirit is the Spirit of Christ who proceeds from the Father and receives of the Son, uh, as the Holy Only Begotten Himself confesses. I have discussed all this in that book of mine about faith, the book which, as I said, I wrote to Pamphylia and Pisidia. But here, since I have come to the to the debated expressions one after another, I have had the diligently to make the simple points of over again as it were because of Arius, the heresiarch with whom we are dealing and the arguments who derive from him to demolish the weak arguments which turn sweet to bitter, good to evil, good to evil and light to darkness. 
For though the holy Isaiah woe is definitely pronounced by the holy by the by the Lord upon such people who turn to God who turn good to evil. And God is in no way was is no is in no way responsible for their kind. From bright prejudice will be will be wisdom of devilish conceit. Each of them has been deprived of the truth and with his unsound teaching brought an affliction on the world. Okay, all right, let's take up this text in order to understand the words of the the words Lord has spoken as the holy apostle says. We all we also have the spirit of God that we may know the things of that God has bestowed and upon us, which things we like we, we likewise to speak. For the Lord says, Grant them to have life in themselves, and this is life eternal, that they may know thee, and the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast said. Now this trouble marker argues, and his followers jump up and say he's praying to God at all and saying, Father, grant them to have life in it in themselves, so that he is not equal of the giver of the life. If he were of the Father's essence, he will give the life himself and not ask the Father to give it to those who receive the gifts he gives in answer to the, to the request. And the people who have turned their mass against themselves do not realize that the only begotten came to be our example in salvation in every way, and took this stand in the world and took this stand in the world like an athlete in an in an arena to destroy all that rebels against the truth, sometimes idol by idolatry, sometimes by Jewish conceit, sometimes by unbelief, sometimes from the vanity of human prejudice, come to teach men humility, so that no human being will think himself important but will ascribe everything to the Father of all. And so, although he is life, as he says, I am the life, and although he has the power to give life, he has no wish to confuse what is right. As he as he has come to one sovereignty, one Godhead, one truth, one concord, one glory, to secure man's salvation and understanding, he also asks of the Father before his disciples. For which sons, for which son does not ask his father, and which father does give he to his son? But what kind of son is different from nature by his father, and thus the son, the only begotten of the of a father, full of grace and truth, needed of willing, since he was not in want of truth, but full of grace and truth. And he who is full God gives and can give, his will is to deliver all things to the father. For the Son glorifies the Father, and the Father glorifies the only begotten. I have glorified thee on the earth, said the Son to the Father, and the Father said to the Son, I have both glorified thee, and will glorify thee again. The Godhead, the God, the Godhead can have no dispute, knowing why, grant them to have life, grant them to have life in themselves. He who is life, wish to receive life from the Father and give it to his disciples, although he although he himself in life, so as not to defy the divine, divine unity, and thus not put as an obstacle in the way of the Jews, so that the Jews would hear him asking of the Father. Now how does the Son ask the Father, then, as though not having and so as King? No, but by declaring the oneness of the Trinity, which provides the gifts perfectly to one who receives the, them worthily, to show the God has oneness. In other passages, he gives he give gifts, no longer by asking for them, by giving his own on his own authority. For he is wellspring of of wellspring, and God of God. For he breathed in their faces and said, "Receive ye the Holy Spirit." And in another passage. He lifted up his hands and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit, and he has life in himself, to give the whomever he will, his, he will. For as the Father has life in myself, so has the Son life in, myself, in himself. And you see that it is from 
other of the Father and for the sake of one unity and one glory, so that the disciples will not suppose that the only begotten has come to divert the believers' minds for, from the God of the law, and they and the proverbs it is wrong decision that being God and foreknow and foreknowing of the malice of men, he addresses these words as to the Father and gives the Father the glory that cannot be taken away. And so many will be confounded who denies the Father. Disciples will learn that the Godhead is the same in the whole in the old and new, and new testaments. The Jews will be put to shame because the only begotten did not come to teach another God but to reveal his God and that of his heavenly Father. Grant them to have life in themselves, he says, although he himself was proclaiming this life. Why then would he ask the Father to give them what he himself was teaching and giving? For he made the life, no, the life known later on by saying, "This is life, and that this life that they may know thee, the only true God." Next, because Christ said, "The only true God," Arius and his followers jump at the first, as though he, as though he, he they have won an argument against the truth. He said, "The only true God." You see, then the only the Father, the, that that only the Father is true. But let's uh, but next ask you against ourselves. What do you mean? If only is only the father too. But what is the son? Isn't the son is true? If the son isn't true, our faith is vain and our preaching is in vain. And in blasphemy against your will selves or against your own selves, you will be found to be likening of the son of God to the unspeakable in famous idols. You to whom the prophet say, the prophet said, as though the persons who are suffering a delusion, Solomon says, the worship of the unspeakable idols is the beginning of evil. And each of the prophets recalled this text, like Jeremiah, who said, O unto them that fall of the idols, and our fathers made for themselves false gods, false gods, and their high places become flesh, become false. The only begotten too is condemned in your eyes, and you does hold the disgusting opinion of him who redeemed you. If indeed he did redeem you, for since you deny yourself, so severe, your Savior you, who redeemed you, you cannot be of his fault. For if God is not true, he should not he should not be worshipped, and he and if he is created, he is not God. And if and if he is not to be worshipped, how can he be called God? Stop it, you who are making a God of one more natural object, who are conducting Babylonian worship. You have set up Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's image and idol. You, are, you who are blowing this renowned trumpet to unite the worshippers against the, the throne of God, who with your wrong words are bringing the peoples to disaster with music, symbols and psaltery, preparing them to serve an image greater than God and truth, and who else is a true is as true as the Son of God. For you for who shall be likened to the Lord among the sons of God, says the scripture, and none other shall be reckoned is in comparison with him. And what does he say next? To show you that he means the Son, he describes him next and says he has worn out every way of understanding and given it to Jacob, his servant in Israel, whom he loved. And thereafter he appeared on set and consulted with men. How can this not have been said truly of him? And how can the Son not be true God when he says, I am the truth? But you will ask me, why did the only begotten true God say, say that they may now be the only true God? I reply, to discourage polytheism to prevent division of the life-giving knowledge. If the Father is the only true God, then the Son is true and truly begotten of the Father. For it was to honor the Father and reveal Him a lot as true God that the Son made it known that He is truly begotten of the Father. And how was this to be made known? Just look at the text here. It says here, that the Father is the only true God, but in the Gospel according to John it says, 
he was the two like and was two like was this but the only but the only begotten and say and again the scripture says of God God is like and didn't say God is too like on the other hand they said of God's only begotten son that the only begotten is too like it is said to God of the of the father and not had not, and not that God is too like but of the son it is said God and didn't add two to the son of God to the, the son is God and with and where it said God is like it didn't say too like then what should we say of the father? We shall confess that God is true like and not make the God head defective. And because true like is not said of God in the scripture, so we also sinfully say that God is not true like and since scripture and since scripture says that so, that the son of the son is God and that he was God with the true father, the word was God and he didn't say that the the word become God and he was God, and be an equivalence of the Father and the Son will be shown by the two faces, from the Father's being two God and the Son's being two light of equality of the reign will be evident, from the Son's being God and the Father's being light, an equivalence of the glory will be made plain, and there will be no difference, nor can anyone contradict the truth, but the Father is true God, and the only begotten is true God. But I am obliged to speak further here about the Holy Spirit, or if I leave anything out, I may give the enemy who want to contradict a chance to hold their weak, weak beliefs, for it is the same with the Holy Spirit as the Lord himself testifies by, say, by saying the Spirit of truth and the Spirit of the Father, but the Apostle by saying Spirit of Christ. Thus being the Spirit of the Father and the Spirit of the Son, the Holy Spirit is the, is the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of God, just as God is true God, just as He is true life. For there is one Trinity, one glory, one Godhead, one Lordship. The Father is the Father, the Son is the Son, the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is not an identity separate from its own unity, not one thing in perfection, nor strange to its own identity, but is one perfection, three perfects, one Godhead. And this word of the opposition has fallen from its hand. Indeed, the scripture says, the blows become a weapon or webs. Even if the infants want to take weapons, they lack the strength and cannot do anything with their hands. Even though Infants at roses to anger they, they kill and do harm to themselves rather than anyone else, since they cannot make an arm attack on others. Similarly, these people have sent their imposture to work with themselves, but, we, but will bring no evil in, on the songs of the truth. But, once more, I shall go on to other texts which they have thought of. To begin with, the falsehood they use in order to deceive the simple and innocent is amazing. As the serpent deceived Eve in her innocence, so they, they wish to win the allegiance first approach those who do not wish to go with the creed with much flattery and with liberal expeditor attention and what promises and treats such as you are, op you are opposing the imperial decrees and the word of the imperial violence. And what they do not, and what do they say next? Well, what is it that we are saying? Is it the fate itself only you are to proud to admit it? Alright, let's see whether this is the fate. They say, we confess that the son is begotten of the father and do not deny it, but they say we must also confess that he is a creator and not a, and a product of creation. But nothing could be more pathetic. Nothing created is like is like anything begotten. Not any not and nothing begotten is like anything created, especially in the case of the one of that one pure and perfect essence. For all things have been created by God and only God's Son has been begotten, and only the Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father and received of the Son. 
All other things are created beings, and neither proceed from the from the Father, nor receive of the Son, nor receive the Son's fullness, as the Scripture says. But the Word of God, where all things established, and all the hosts of them, by the Spirit of the but of the by the Spirit of His mouth. But it, well, we must confess the Creator God as well, says Arius, since Scripture has said Creator in a figurative sense. An offspring, an offspring is meant figuratively. For even we say offspring, we shall not mean an offspring like an, like any other. Well then, they are deceiving the innocent by seeing offspring, and the offspring isn't real. But we also confess Christ creature good. They say for Christ is also called dog, way, pillar, cloud, rock, lamb, lamb, stream, st stream, calf, lion, wellspring. Wisdom, God, Son, Angel, Christ, Heavier, Lord, Man, Son of Man, Cognizant, Son, Prophet, Bread, King, Building, Husbandman, Shepherd, Wine, and all sorts of, of, the, of things like this. In the same way, they say, we also use creature in any accommodated sense of the word. We are bound to confess it, such weak speculation and such cunning. May the Lord allow no son, no son of the truth to be brought by such dissimulation to accept a creature as the son of God, of God's title for such reasons, and make that the confi and make that confession. Let them tell, tell us what the use of this is, and we will grant them the conclusion of the of the reasonings. For all those things are ways of speaking and do not impair the son's divinity. Make him defective is in comparison with the father or alter him for his essential nature. Even if he should be called dog, it is because we enter by him. If God, it's because we go by him. If pillar, because he is the support of the truth. Even if cloud, this because he overshadowed the children of Israel. If fire, because of because of the brightness of the fire which gave them light in the wilderness. Even if he should be called manna, this because they denied that he was the bread from heaven, if bread because we are strengthened by him. Even if angel, this because he is an angel of a great council, the word angel is a synonym, Rahab, received the angels, and yet the men who had been sent, who had been sent there were not angels, but the persons who brought the report of the place. And so, because he reported the Father's will to men, the only begotten is an angel of great counsel who reports to great counsel in the world. And even if he should be called stone, the stone is, non, is not anim, uh, inanimate. It is this a way of speaking because he has become a stumbling block to the Jews by the foundation of salvation to us. And he is called cornerstone because he unites unite United the Old and New Testaments, circumcision and uncircumcision as one body, but he is called Lamb. But he is called Lamb because of his harmlessness and because the sin of humankind has been done away by his offering to the Father as a Lamb for the slaughter, for the impossible came to suffer for our salvation. And whatever else in this, in this, in this usage is an Aid to human salvation is applied to him by sacred scripture is in some accommodated sense. Now, what good can Creator do, or what use is it to our salvation and to the glory of perfect divinity and incarnate, the div incarnate divine word? He does not call him Creator help us, but what the Creator do for the creatures? How does the Creator benefit creatures? Why did God create? Why did God create a son, a son, and allow him to worship as God? Where he say, when he says, "Thou shalt not make thyself any likeness, neither, neither not earth nor in heaven, and thou shalt not worship it." But why did he create this? Why did he create a son for himself, and order that he be worshipped, particularly when the apostle says, "And they serve the Creator rather than the Creator." And were made up, and were made fools. This foolish 
to the to create a clear that God and break the first commandment, which says, "Those shall those shall worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve." And thus God's holy church worships not a creator but the begotten Son, the Father in the Son, the Son in the Father, with the Holy Spirit. Oh yes, say Arius, unless I say he is a creator, I attribute diminu diminution to the Father, for the creator does not diminish the creator, but the nature of things the begotten shrinks its begotter, or broadens, or lessens, or cuts it, or does it some such injury. It is most foolish of those who think such things to imagine God said in their likeness, and of those who attribute their frailties to God, since God is wholly impossible, both in begetting and in creating. We are creators and we are suffer when we get when we beget, we tire when we create. And if the Father suffers in begetting, then he also tires in be and, and then he also tires in creating. But how can one speak of suffering in connection with God and of his tiring if he creates? He does not tire, never think it. The scripture says, He shall not weary, the God is spirit, and be God the spiritually, and be God the Son spiritually, without beginning and not in time, God of God, like of like, fair God of fairy God, begotten, not made. But shall, but I shall pass this text by two. And was for the fault by attention to the order to, to others which they repeat and bend about in wrong senses and which I have mentioned earlier. For again they confusedly misinterpret this one. Receive you receive your high priest who is faithful to him that made him. In the first place they reject this epistle, I mean the epistle to the Hebrews, remove it bodily from the apostle and say that it is not it is not his. But because of their melody, they turn to text to add their fantasy. I said, as, as I said, take it in a wrong sense and covertly introduce the son's creatorhood, so possibly by means of no words, faithful to him, faithful to him that made by that made him. But someone with sense might ask them, when our Lord adopted the title of high priest, they will be at a loss because of because they have no assert. Christ never adopted these names before his incarnation. Stone, sheep led to the slaughter, man and uh, and man and son of man, eagle, lamb, and all the rest that are applied to him after his coming in the flesh. Thus he is called high priest because of the declaration of the law made of him. A prophet shall the Lord, a prophet shall the Lord rise unto you of your brethren. The text thus plainly explains prophets, high priest of them. As at Aristotle's given after his sojourn on earth, and it can be seen at a glance now, how, at a glance how once again God's unconquer unconquerable power and found knowledge brought out and sanctified all this by its wondrous light, to the stopping of every every mod that rebels against the truth. For he says in this same passage, if every high priest taken from among the men is ordained for men. To offer gifts and sacrifices, being able to bear with their infirmities, for he hath need to offer his for his own sins. But that but he that had no sin offered himself to the Father and of men, he said because of the earthly sojourn, but of but not of men and that and that hath no sin, I said because of the divinity, and his divinity he says, though he were a son, but of his humanity, he learned by the things he suffered. And you see, all and you see that all of Christ's titles are simple and have nothing complicated in them. High priest faithful to him that met him, here describes neither the making of his body here, nor of his human nature, nor is it speaking of creation at all, but of the bestowal of his rank after his incarnation, like the text. He gave him a name which is above every which is above every name, and this was not the, the and, and this was not done of all the divine nature, but in his current advent, since the human nature he took from the man, he, he took from Mary received the name above every name, the title Son of God, in addition to the title of divine word, and again, for this reason, 
she has said he has adhered to the apostle himself we see jesus for a little was made lower than the angel crowned with glory and honor so that master and maker of the angels would appear lower than they say so that he so that he who inspires the angels with dread and fear and with the father and the holy spirit made the angels from nothing will be called lower and it would be plainly evident that he is not speaking of his godhead here but of his place for suffering of death was not counted as the words before he took place but after his incarnation with the same word being possible in impossible impossible in godhead but suffering in manhood whereas as both the title applied to the one person of son of man to the same person and son of god to the same for Christ is called the Son in both light in both light. Why did God make him then? For all that for all that has been said the troublemakers should learn that nothing is in text is relevant to the Godhead but the human nature and made him thus refer to the maker of creating him but to his rank after that fed. Is somewhat asks a king about his son and says what is he to you? The king will tell him he is my son. If is he your is he your legitimate or your illegitimate son? The king will say he is my legitimate son. Then what did you make him? I made him king. Plainly, the son's rank is not different from his father's, and because he has said I made him king, the story does not mean that the king is saying I raised him. In saying I made him, he had certainly not denied by the beginning by the beginning of him which has not knowledge but has made of the plan i met him however what the statement of his rank thus by those who wish to obtain salvation the son is unambiguously un believed to be to be the son of the father and is worship but was made high priest he said because he offered himself in his body to the father for mankind himself the priest himself the victim I, as high priest for all creation he over himself spiritually and gloriously in his body itself and sat down at the father's right hand after being and after, after being made an high priest forever and passing into the heavens once and for all the same holy apostle testi the same holy apostle testifies to this of him in the lines that so that follow and once again, there was the ostensible discussion of sacred scripture, which they use as their excuse, has proved a failure, for scripture is life-giving, nothing in it offers an obstacle to the faithful or makes for the downfall of blasphemy against the world. Then, they have mentioned under the passage, when John was standing in the wilderness, showing him coming and said, this is he of whom I said unto you, a man come after me that was made from that was made before me, that he was before me, and first as though he they were half closely, they misunderstand the expressions themselves and said, How could this apply to the human nature? For he was to con for he was to conceive in my Mary's womb before the conception of John, instead as the evangelist says in the sixth month. The angel Gabriel was sent to the city of Galilee to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph. And he came into her and said, Hail, thou that art highly profitable, that art, that art highly profitable, the Lord is with thee. And rest that, and rest that follows. When the virgin was troubled at his greeting, he said to her, Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bear a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And behold, the cousin Elizabeth had, had conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her with, that is called barren. And you see, they say that John was already the six months before the Annunciation to Mary. However, he was made before me apply to Christ's human, Christ human nature. Can any innocent soul whose mind is not clear and firmly made up hear that without being upset for truly for those who bring their troubles and their of themselves the sacred scriptures cogen cogen innocent life-giving teachings appear to do more harm than good although the texts are always illumined in the holy spirit 
what has been omitted to make the text convincing. See here, see here, it is it say this to indicate something feasible and saw it to, to unlook us. This is he of whom I said unto you that he comes after me, and who is coming but a man, but no one with sense will suppose that our Lord is a mere man on this sex. We have already indicated the Carinthus, Merinthians, Merinthians, and Ebionites. But together with knowing him as man, it is surely true that the true believers know him with certainty, with certainty as Lord, as John testifies that which we have heard from the beginning meaning him who is from the beginning who is from the beginning the invisible divine word of whom we have heard in the sacred scriptures who is proclaimed in the who is spoken in the prophets who is him in heaven thus the intent of the line we have heard with our ears from the beginning and have seen with our eyes is for the word here coming first to confess that he is God from the beginning but for the word see is to show that he is the man who of whom John the Baptist said after become a man and our hands have handed his man to show that he is God from on high and indicate that he is invisible man born of Mary and raised whole from the dead without losing the sacred vessel and perfect human nature he had taken, it is man instead from the handling of his side and the near prince to give unshakable testimony all to all three. So please understand here too that he is it is this is he of whom I said unto you that a man come after, after me is meant to show the human nature he was before me to show the Godhead because he was before me for he was the for he was in the world says in the gospel and the world was made by him and the world knew him not but if he was in the world before the creation and beginning of John he had arrived in the world before have arrived in the world before him not meaning created or making, but in the sense in which people used to say, use the same word to say, I arrived in, the Jerus in Jerusalem, arrived in Babylon, arrived in Ethiopia, arrived in Alexandria, not meaning creation here, but presence and arrival. And why does I have arrived, I arrived in Babylon or some other place mean but? I came there. He arrived here before me, shows the continual presence on earth of the world, and he was before me, so that the Godhead is eternal, comparing after me, thus, however, indicate his conception of the chance. And so I am the, I am the force of one guy in the wilderness, means a guy to draw, to draw people's attention, which when people call they give a lot a, a lot short first without any words to call from a distance to people who need to hear something from, from them and once the people hear the shot which is only a short and patient and get ready to hear then finally the so the parent pronounces whatever words he wanted to see and that's john who and that's john was was a voice in the wilderness to draw people's attention for john, him, for john himself was the word the word on whose account the preparatory shout was heard after came after him and this is why he says the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord the voice prepares the ways but the lord sets foot on the ways which have been prepared and a voice speaks to the ear but when the ear is receptive, the word is implanted in the ears of its receivers. Thus, Arius and his followers will never perceive God's truth, although it, it enlightens the hearts of the faithful at all times to prevent the right turning away from the salvation which is to be found in the word, the true, uncreated, and unoriginate Son of God. But again, as I go ahead and come to its topic in turn, I shall not omit any point I have previously proposed for, sol for solution, but take up the trade again. Once more, the Arians offer another excuse. St. Peter's words in X, in X be it known unto you, all ye hosts of Israel, that God hath met this Jesus, whom ye crucified, but Lord and Christ. And again, they see, he here we find met in scripture and they do not see that the praise which is jesus from the first is self-explanatory means the lost human nature the meaning is clear from this jesus whom you crucified 
this plainly the flesh which they crucified for it is clear that they crucified flesh and thus the lord says in the gospel but now ye but now ye seek it to kill me a man that has told you the truth which i have got have heard of my father declaring himself a man but not separating his godhead from when from his manhood for neither was Christ Godhead separated from his manhood when he was about to suffer, no he was no he no when he suffered was the human nature abandoned by the world. But no more he, but no more had the impossible what if he beauty suffered. He suffered only in the suffering flesh. From the same truly applies to both not to both natures and is given to the divine nature and the true human. The human nature of the word himself is Christ, and yet Christ is the word is the Lord, and yet Christ is is the Lord in the human nature itself. But the suffering is in the flesh, as Peter said, Christ suffered for us in flesh, to show the divine nature's impassibility, and again die in the flesh, go to life and in the spirit. As Peter said, this Jesus whom they crucified to show that the sacred human nature was not abandoned by the impossible and created world, but was united with the created uh, with the uncreated of what on high. And this is why he said, God had made with Lord and Christ the thing that was conceived by Mary, the thing that had been united by with God had. For Mary is not defined by nature, for the reason he had made. And so when Mary asked him, How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man, the angel Gabriel said, The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and the power of the high, of the high shall overshadow of thee. Therefore also that which shall be born with shall be called holy, the Son of God. But when he said, That which shall be born, he sought unquestionably that the divine word is in the end in to be to be, t- to be tably a son, not created, not made, and as to the human nature, which was one, which was one of Mary, he sought by adding that which is born shall he also shall also be, co- be be called holy, the son of God, and that that God had made even the thing that was born, Christ and Lord, and as everything about the other passages has been fully dealt with and presents no difficulty here to here to everything about about his human nature had been that with for those who are attended to their salvation there is no by path by by but for the word is a living word from a living from a living father the father son not his creator but everything in the in the human nature has been dealt with so that no one may suppose that he is an apparition or that his flesh is consensual with with his godhead on high but everyone will realize that the human nature is united in one impossibility especially after his resurrection from the dead for scripture says he died no more that had no more dominion over him there is one lord one christ one king seated at the father's right hand at the, at the father's right hand and that which is physical and spiritual is one union one spiritual godhead but not two radiant and glorious but since i feel that the passage has been sufficiently exploded i shall pass it by and let me take up the discussion by going on to one my hearers against the other parts of their foolishness which they have invented for the throw of their heroes for again they say if he is of the fa- if he is of the father's essence why does he not why does he not know the the hour and the day but by his own admission and knowledge to these disciples that he does not know the things the fathers know the fathers the father knows and say of the day and that our not ne, not no man not even the angels in heaven of the son but the father only if the father if the father knows they say he does not know how can the fathers and the son godhead be the same when the son doesn't know doesn't know what the father does but not knowing but not knowing the the human fidelity they say to their own harm on everything that the only begotten in his divine wisdom teaches mystically for the assurance of the truth knowledge as horrid serpents when caught by a crafty human hunter they debate to their own destruction they do not know that falsehood will never stand we, while the truth always keeps its own its own sound strike and confounds falsehood those who hark 
who those who have about this every suspicious of, of Christ from the first must tell us which is by the two greater and more important to know God the Lord of God the Lord of all and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, of the day which is brought to his turning by the Father the Son and Holy Spirit and the hour which where it when it dawns for if they are asked that question the truth itself will surely oblige them to say that the Father is greater as indeed he is now if the son says neither not neither not any man the father save the son and no man not the son save the father when he knows the greater thing the father how can he not how can he not know the lesser thing but these words are divided and spoken by the holy spirit and are not noble by those who have who have not received the gift and grace of the holy spirit for such the arians which with their wavering and spirit and feeble and feeble intellect and they step into heartful deviations even in their minor ones from for the lords on watch we step out to meet them be ye ready let your loins be girded about and let there be lamps in your hands and be ye and be ye as good servants awaiting their master for like a thief in the night so will the day come and the holy apostle says ye are not children of the night but of the day lest the day should come upon you as a thief if then the children of the day we are not hidden by the darkness but are ready because the master come in a day did not not and at our hour they await not then because of his billion keeping and his god had not will not he Will not he who gives them being be different from his servants, the sons of the day? Or like those who do not know the day and are, and are unprepared, will he be caught in ignorance and subject to deficiency? But what? But who but the insane could suppose these things of the Lord that he will be like his subjects and, and disciples? Or like those who from their unpreparedness and ignorance are inferior to this that is just silly now if these things are not possible but the explanation when one com compared with it with it turns out to contradict this the saying we need to see what explanation we can find that we we'll leave both saying and explanation uncontradicted and prevent our deviating from the truth from the lord cannot lie for the Lord cannot lie and can give no expositions for our salvation in vain. Thus the Father knows the day, the Son knows, and the Holy Spirit knows. For nothing in the Father is different from the Son, nor is anything in the Son different from the Spirit. In every sect, when I need when I needed to, I have shown with authentic proofs that the Trinity is one Godhead and has no eternal differences, but is all perfection, three perfects, one glory, and one sovereignty. But will you ask me? Why did he say this? Why did he say this then? And I and I have already given an explanation for this as well. But nothing need keep me from adding to the same things and telling the same truths. To me, it is not but the but it is not burdensome. But it will be a safeguard for the risk for the readers and refutatory refutatory of the opposition. The reason for this as follows. Christ has made incidental mention in the same sentence of three rings, the Father himself and the angel, the angels in heaven. And he has attributed knowing to the Father, implying not only acquaintance and knowledge, but everything that is always undi undebatedly controlled, brought about and made by the Father and the Son. Indeed, the Father knows the day, knows it, has patient and made it, and at the same time judge. As he said in the gospel according to John, the Father judged no man, but had given a, ju a judgment to the Son. In giving judgment, he has judged. In judging, then he knew the day, knowing he is aware when it will come. For he that believed not on the Son is judged already, not in the sense that judgment is passed, but that what will happen then is already made plain, just as any particular things a particular thing follows from this or that cause for scripture is aware of more than one sort of knowledge and in my frequent and in my frequent returns to the main point i have never ceased to clarify and explain each subject with the similes and examples which have already been discussed so let's take up the discussion again too 
from the get from the beginning and speak about these things and why what do you mean people did or didn't adam know if his wife even before they dis their disobedience and transgression and you can contradict the truth even though you prefer not to deal fairly with the sense of this you will you will be exposed from scripture says they were naked and were not ashamed for if they were naked and not blind they saw they saw and knew each other for neither can you deny this and not admit that they could see if so that the tree was good for for good for food and goodly to look upon thus they saw and knew and know and by knowing and by knowing and seeing they recognize each other but it is watched but it was much later when scripture said and adam knew and adam knew if his wife it speaks of the first knowledge and sight in the sense of knowledge gained by seeing and intellection but in the case of second acquaintance and knowledge it is describing knowledge and by experience thus the second scripture says that the shape of david in his old age and david was old and not could keep warm and his servant said let a fergan be so for the king and the, and there was for a besak the tsunami and he says and she warmed it he stepped up by her side and david knew her not how could he not know how could he not he not know her when she was close to his body and stepped beside him but here scripture is describing not knowledge by interaction by but by knowledge by experience indeed it is the same with jacob when he when he saw when he was herding with Leah with Leah and Rachel for seven years he knew him he knew them but when what but when the scripture speaks of the lawful conjugal intercourse it says they knew Leah his wife the first knowing was by intellection and by sight but the second architance and knowing but was by experience and activity and likewise in the second scripture the lord know them that are his just that are his doesn't mean that he does not know he doesn't know those who are who aren't his who aren't his but refers to the activity of lord's assistance and so with the part for me all your workers of iniquity i never let i never know, knew you did he have no intellectual knowledge of of them but because they were not worthy of him he without his personal knowledge for them uh, from them and elsewhere he says you have i not of all nations if we take this literally all the nations and the entire human population have been left out of his knowledge on the contrary are in the hairs of each one's head known by him of those who serve and those who disobey him and god not the ways of the right on the right hand does he know the ways on the left and how much of this sort can be said of the different kinds of knowledge and so with god's only begotten son since he says the father has given judgment to the son he attributed the knowledge of personal acquaintance and experience to the father for no one knows the day save the father is ran into ways he knows when it comes indeed the day and hour come by his authority and he knows it and he knows it by acting and he knows it by acting for there has for there for there has already been a divinity on his part the delegation of the judgment to the only begotten son and thus the same knowledge is in the only begotten son of god since he is god and no difference from the from the father for he himself knows the day he brings it himself carries it on bring it brings it to an end and judges and without him it cannot come but he does not but he does not know it through activity yet that is he had not yet judged the impuse are still impuse the unrighteous covered fornicators adulterers idolaters commit iniquity the devil is at work the devil is at work sex sex arise impostors impostor does it work until god's only begotten son brings the day itself and gives its can gives its his just due and then he will know it through activity that is know it through deed and power and in the and in the father knowledge is comp and in the father 
Now is complete in two ways, but in the son, it is there by intellection and is not known, but has not yet been completed by activity. That is, he has not judged. Judged, but knowledge has been withheld from the holy angels in two ways. In the, in the way, in the, in that they do not knew, they need not yet knew, know the day intellectually, intellectually, and also that they do not knew know a true activity that is to the fulfillment of the function. For they have not yet been directed to go out, f gather the impious in bundles like text and prepare them for burning. And you see, beloved and servants of God, that all these people who will come shocking notions because of some prior conception of their own have gone to war in vain and directed against themselves their various attempts to blaspheme the Son of God as lesser and inferior. But now that we have also explained this sufficiently, let us once again, by the power of God, devote our attention to the other arguments, although the great heretics who are who are game for anything do not have beliefs for many hands or like many other sects. Still, even though they hold the Christ's blessedness is real, they hold even is this inadequately and not in the full, fullest sense. They confess that the Savior truly had flesh, but when they learned from the Gospel itself, he tired from his journey, was hungry and thirsty, and went to save and God up, they put all this together and applied it to his God until he wanted to separate his Godhead from the forest essence, for reasons like the following, for they say, he is, the, he is of the Father, but the Father does not tire of thirst or hunger, as the second scripture says, he is not weary, nor hunger or thirst, nor sleep, or of by his counsels, there is no finding out. If the, the if these things are characteristic of the sons of the son, they say, they then he is different from the father's essence and nature, and they themselves will admit that before it incarnation these things it will apply to the only begotten. However, how they are forced to admit this and come to the to the things he did not he did in human nature and hear and hear that Naturally, he did these things because he had taken a body, yielding to them for his legitimate needs, like a mole yielding to a carrier because he had taken flesh in reality and not appearance. Then they claim that this, and they claim that this was a due to his flesh alone. For in fact, for in fact, flesh cannot of itself, flesh cannot of itself taste of God of God I, but those who have felt the God and turn off on the path that lead in the opposite side. The situation do not know that the Son of God did not simply take flesh at his coming, but also took up soul, a mind, and everything human except for sin, and was truly begotten, though not of a man's seed, but of the Holy Virgin Mary by the Holy Spirit. But if they will not admit themselves, he has taken a soul he will be made of full of by this argument against them which the simplest of all the replies to their nonsense the true god who his who says by himself i am the truth himself acknowledges that my soul is troubled my soul is exceeding sorrowful and i have power to lay on my soul and to take it this last this last to show that as god has, he has this power but that by his incarnation has truly become man. For no man could say this, no one has the power to lay his soul down and take it. But when Christ speaks, when Christ speaks of a soul, he shows that he has become a man, become man in reality, not the appearance. But again, he says, I am the good shepherd, I am the good shepherd who lays down his soul for the sheep. And to show the ability of these things, to, he said to his father on the cross, Into thy hands I come in my spirit. And I and when the soldiers came, the scripture says, they found that he had already given given up the cross. And again, crying with a loud voice, he said, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I have also explained this way of speaking earlier in the gospel says, Give up the ghost. For when the truth says, for when the truth says, 
he gave the, up the ghost into thy hands. My sword is tall, my my sword is troubled, and all the rest who would be fool, who would be so foolish as to believe such a bunch of half blind dreamers and ignore the the two credible accept statements of the divine word. And then, like the rest, mutilating sound bodies, hunting out of each scripture, sti scripture things which have been said well and rightly, they appeal to some expression which the which the scripture uses of, often uses figuratively, and they like to cite in, the, in a literal sense something that has been said figuratively by interpret a literal and focal statement as an allegory of something else. They jump right, they jump right up and cite some words from the Holy Isaiah, which were we spoken the people of the Father, behold, my servant shall understand my behold in whom I, I am well pleased, whom my soul love, and though this is the Father speaking, for so indeed he is. Well now that say hey, has the Father taken the soul too? But if we say, of course not, what can this be? Be, but can this be but a figurative expression? They reply, then what was said by the Son is figurative too, and they think they can get an occasion against the truth in this way, but it won't be given them. The truth stands alone on its own feet, undivided, and with no need to for the correction. Well, let's see what both of this mean. If the father became the became corporeal, assumed flesh and said these words, he really took a soul. But if the father did not assume flesh and still said, My soul, this is a regret of such preferring to God to safeguard to so, to the to, to safeguard the son's legitimacy and serve the legitimacy of the father of the father's relationship to to the son. What, but one can but one cannot say the same of the son in this respect. The father did not take flesh while the son assumed flesh. The father, the father did not become man, but the son did. Some, something similar may be said of the father says, My soul has loved him in his passage. So he says, I have, I have found David the son of Jesse, a man after mine, after mine heart. My heart is far for them. If he take what he said of the son figuratively, because my soul has love, is a figure is figure, is figure of speech, then what he say of the heart of the heart is also figurative, and clearly this must be this must be evident to any sensible person. Therefore, if the father speaks figuratively of soul and heart, which he did not take, for he did not assume first things of the this sort are applied to the father in a figurative sense. But the shape is not this to be supposed on the, of the son, for the son took place in the entire human constitution. This will serve uh, as a reply to anyone who speaks figuratively of the son with, with regard to the humanity, since there is not allegorical expression even in a part of a word, because Christ truly took human matter. For if what is said, the son's soul is allegory, and we must take the language of what is avoided figuratively, then the same has been said of his heart. And finally, we will admit that everything about him is appearance and not truth. Therefore, according to Arius contentious, contentious argument, the word cannot receive, cannot have received a heart either when he can, either when he can. Or a liver, flesh, entrails, bones, or anything like that. In the last analysis of in the in the last analysis of the all of these are all allegories, all allegories and made figuratively, or else he just received a plop for a body without any insights. In that case, how could he eat and drink? Forget it. For if the father speaks of a soul and heart, but in his case the meaning is allegorical and the expression is figurative, then the Aryans should also take the heart figuratively in the son's case, since they deny that the son has taken a soul. But if, when pressed, they cannot deny Christ's heart because they, they admit that the Lord received the whole body bodily frame, therefore, given the admission that they are two different, heart, different hearts, the one admitted to be real and the other allegorical, in the case of Christ's soul, the word is, is accurate and not allegorical or figurative. 
However, since cash human, since cash humans not cash human nature is complete in ev in every respect, in body, soul, mind, heart, and everything human exception, by naturally could not could do ma what men do, and yet be entirely complete in complete in Godhead when impossible. His Godhead cannot be less glorious than the Father's perfection, but He will be will be met by human by His human nature and His thirst, hunger, drinking, eating, sleeping, discouragement, while His Godhead is impossible. And again, the argument about this has failed since Christ became flesh while being God. But if they say, if He was the Father, why did he, why did He become flesh? Become flesh? If our reply would be, what do you say about the angels? For it is plain to if we want the Aryans admit the, ange the angels were made by the Son. Indeed, they also blaspheme the Holy Spirit by venturing to say that He was created by, by the Son, although He has uncreated, proceeding from the Father and receiving of the Son. The, hence, if they, if they dare to, de to, if they dare to say this of, of the Holy Spirit, how much more will they be unable to deny in the case of the angels who are created beings that they have received their assistance from the only begotten. If they if then the angels he created were crea if he created were created spiritual but are spirit but are his creation in spite of that and his workmanship and infinitely far below his essence and yet they have not taken flesh what do you what do you say about that? Are they greater, greater than the Son, even though created, created by Him, or the Holy Spirit too? Why didn't He come to flesh, put on flesh, and become man, either the Holy Spirit of God or one of the holy angels? The Son certainly did not assume flesh because of an inferiority to the Father. In that case, of in that case, the angels would surely have assumed flesh, or even the Spirit. But since the Son who is the Father's wisdom, power, and word had made all things himself with the Father and the Holy Spirit. He assumed flesh to show that the reason of the, for Adam's retransgression or disobedience was not that Adam was a creator or that God had made sin, but Adam's own choice, so that the Son could carry his righteousness, but his righteous judgment too, as Isaiah said. I, I breathe sweet, shall not he shall he not break? A smoking flax shall he not quench? Till he shall carry the judgment to the to, to the to victory, and in his name shall the Gentiles hope. As David said of him, Those shall be victorious when thou art judged. For he was judged in order to silence his opponents by judging by judging justly, for no one will be able for no one will be able to oppose his righteous judgment. For he worked the body and kept it undivided, for it was certainly not at, his, not, not at, the, at the instance of the Creator, who is not responsible for Adam's sin, that the that, that which was in man, was in man, that is in Adam, for the beginning came to the point of becoming sin, where the result that Adam sinned. The Creator allowed the Adam's Adam's freedom of choice and inspiration is responsible for his own sin. And thus, although he was not responsible for sin, the divine word, the Creator, who with, the, who with his Father and Holy Spirit created man, the immortal and undefined world, became man of his own and good pleasure by some ineffable mystery of wisdom, and he and in his esteem loving kindness under no compulsion but of his own free will he assumed all his creatures characteristics for his creatures sake to the condemned sin in the flesh and all the curse on the cross utterly destroyed destruction in the grave and by descending to Hades resolved in Godhead make void made void the covenant with Hades and break the sting of death but the, but the ungrateful turn goods completely to bed and no longer thank to the kind, perfect, good son of a good father for the, for the things of which one should take him. Instead, the son in gratitude by attributing frailties to his God to his Godhead, things they are not able to prove since the truth is evident to, every, to everyone. And now that, and now that 
this have been expounded, I shall go on in turn to other arguments in succession. For they quote the text in the Gospel, The Father who sent me is greater than I, with a better interpretation. In the first place it says, The Father who sent me, not the Father who created me. For all the sacred scriptures show his true, ship, his true sonship to the Father. They say, The Father begot me, I came forth, I came forth from the Father, and I am come. I am the Father and the Father in me, the Father who sent me, the Father who sent me, and now where and now where and now where have they said the Father who created me or the Father who made me? And why do they keep heap, heaping up this keep heaping up things that are not so? The Father who sent me is greater than I. What could be more proper, more cogent, more necessary, more fitting? Who? But his true son, the, own, the one begotten of him, is the proper person to glorify the Father. For the Father glorifies the Son, and the Son glorifies the Father, and the Son glorifies the Father brought to, the, to be an example to us. And for the sake of his glorification of, of the Father as, a uni as one union and glory with himself teaching, Teaching us that this that this honor is the Father's honor, as he said, He that honored not he that honored not the Son as he honored the Father, the word of God abide upon him. But in what way do Arian do Arians think that he is greater in bulk, in time, in bulk, time, he each word? Which of these in which of these is in God for us to conceive of. Time does apply to the Godhead, so that the Son who is begotten of the Father but not in time might be, con might be considered inferior, nor does the Godhead allow, allow for advancement, or the Son might achieve the Father's greatness by advancing to it. For if the Son of God is called the Son of, is called the Son of God as the result of advancement, then he once had many equals and advanced by being called higher in rank, but was once lower than someone who outranked him. But the scripture says, What shall he what shall be likened unto the world among the sons of God, since all things are termed sons colloquially, but he alone is son by nature, not grace, for he had found a free fat, a free fat, a free path of understanding and none shall be declared in his equal. But what do again say? But do what do again say? The father surpasses the son in elevation. Where is the Godhead located? Or is it abounded by space so that bigger than bigger might be shown by, by circumference? Forget it, God is spirit, and the heretical invention is a complete failure. Let us pass this by two, beloved, and go on to the rest of their arguments. For they say that the senders, the sen the sender is not like the serpent, the is, is not like the sent, but the sender and send differ in power because the one sends, while the other is sent. And if the meaning of the truth were what they say, the whole subject of our knowledge could not be traced to one unity of truth, power, and Godhead. For if two, for if two were meeting or two were sending, the son so the son would no longer be a son but a brother. Who has another brother, no longer a father, but if they were related by identity or, or adoption, or if one were to send by himself, or if the two, or if the two sent together or arrived to, uh, together, they would show that they are two God's heads and not one unity. But here there is a sender and a send, showing that there is a one source of all of all good things, the Father, but the next after the source comes one who to correspond with his name and son of uh, his name of son and what and not with any other is one source spring for our from a source the father the son the son comfort even with the father but begotten without beginning and at time as this as the scripture says for with thee for, for with thee the source of life and to show the same of the holy spirit it adds in it adds in thy like we shall see like Serving that the Father is like the fa the Son is the Father's like, the Holy Spirit is like, and the source spring from a source that is from the Father, 
and the only begotten, the Holy Spirit, for out of his belly shall flow rivers of water spring up unto eternal life. But say the God says the gospel, he said this of the Holy Spirit. And again, to teach his disciples his conscientiously with the Father, he says, If any man open to me, I, I and my father will come in will come in and make our abode with him. And here he no longer said, I shall be sent by my father, but I and my father will make work our abode with him, with the son knocking and the father entering with him, so that it is everlasting, and neither is the father separated from the son, nor the son separated from his father. So and so he says in another passage, I am the way, and by me shall they go in shall they go in unto the father, unless it be it be told that he is less than the Father because they go in the because they go in to the Father by him he says, No man can come unto me unless my heavenly Father draw him. Thus the Father thus the Father brings him to the Son, and the Son brings him to the Father, but brings him in the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is forever eternal, one unity of Godhead, three perfects, one Godhead. And the Arians argument has filed has failed. But again they say, Why did Christ tell his he tells tells his disciples, I go unto my father and your father and unto my God and your God, if he acknowledges him as as his God, how can be how can he be equal or legitimately be begotten of his a son? Showing that they are entirely ignorant of God and in no way illumined by the light of the gospel. Always, in every generation, one who examined and investigated will know the meaning of the truth of the perfect knowledge of our Saviour and of his equality with the Father. But these people, each from, be from being wrapped up in Jewish thinking and are annoyed with the Son of God, just as the Jews said, For no evil deed do we, for no evil deed do we stone thee, but, the, but though, being a man, calls thy Son of God, making thyself equal by God. They are annoyed to be they are annoyed to because they have gotten into the same state into the same state as the Jews and Pharisees and will not call the Son equal to the sire who begot him. For observe the accuracy of the scriptures. The second scripture never used the expression before the incarnation. The Father says, Let us make men to the Son, calling the Son his fellow creator and showing that he is he, he is is how is he is his own son and equal the son never said my god and your god before the incarnation but and adam heard, heard the voice of god work in the garden and god said to noah make to thyself make to thyself an ark of acacia wood and the lord reigned from the lord and the and the lord reigned from the lord and the lord said unto moses i am the god of abraham and god and the god of isaac and the god of jacob and david says the Lord said unto my Lord, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. And the Lord never said, My God and your God. But when he had taken our body, appeared on earth, and consorted with men, and become one of us, then he said, My God and your God, my Father and your Father, to his disciples, whom it was his duty to be like in all respects except sin. My Father, by nothing in the Godhead and your Father by grace because of me in the adoption, my God because I have taken because I have taken your flesh and your God by nothing and in truth, and thus everything and thus everything is crystal clear and nothing the sacred scripture is contradictory or has any taint of that as the Arians pretend in concocting their weak arguments, but again I think this has been sufficiently explained and shall next go. On the, and shall next go on to the rest. For again, they say that the Holy Spirit is the creator of a creator because of, by the Son all it is were made. And the scripture says, stupidly, stupidly seizing on crea creating uncertain lines, not reading the text as it is worded, but with wrong suppositions, and apart from the text misinterpreting in terms of the wrong, in the wrong supposition, something that has been correctly said.
For the divine gospel did not say this of the Holy Spirit, it said of all created things that all that anything which is created was made through the word and by the word. If you read further by the line, if you read further the line, all things were made through him, and without him was not one thing made, includes the words that was made to make it clear that all created things were made by him and not a single thing without him. Then again it says, In him was life. For here to for here to the sacred of Saint John's expressions must be made complete as he goes on his confessions that non-existent things has been made in existence once. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, since he says was and was in the in him was him was life, and was the two like the two like, and he was in the world, and all the rest the blessed John. But the Holy Spirit's inspiration is making it plain with this was that all that was made was through was made through him. But the maker of all things that were made is prior to them all. However, the scripture says that all things were made through him, but did not but did not say what the things that were made were that were made were. For there for there was never any supposition of weakness, so that no one could suppose things that were were not true and blaspheme God's changeless, changeless and alterable Holy Spirit. It is on the account that the Lord says, If any man, if any man say a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. It, it shall be forgiven him. But if any man say out against, out against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither neither here nor in the world to come. For the whole of the argument is ridiculous. One might, however, answer them in terms of their blasphemous supposition and say, your hot sort of peace and world twisters who want to count God's Holy Spirit as a creator or on account of or account of all things were made to him because of all things, although the Holy Spirit is never counted in, in the, never counted in with all things. You suppose you should suppose then in terms of your blessed people's supposition, if indeed there is anyone else who is worse than you, that the Father too was made to the Son. For the line which says that all things were made to him is comprehensive. But if it is but if it is blasphemous to think any any such thing of the Father and foolish, the like up the like applies to do, the like applies to those who suspect it of the Holy Spirit who belongs with the Father and the Son. For if he were for if he for if he were were a thing that is made he will not be reckoning reckoned in the uncreated father and the uncreated son but because he is uncreated he is to recount the scripture said go baptize the go baptize in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and how can the spirit be created when it is testified of him that he proceed from the father and receive of me and to make to him man's full salvation and everything, and everything required for the human nature was made was made complete. For the scripture of the, for the scripture says of the Lord, God anointed with Him with the Holy Spirit, but the Father who would not but the Father would not have anointed Christ's human nature, which had been united with God, you had been you, which had been united in one Godhead with the divine Word with the Creator. However, since the Trinity is one, three perfects, one Godhead, this needed to be done, for the Son is the dispensation of the Incarnation, so that the Trinity, completely glorified in all things, would be observed to be one. I have cited no mere one of the texts of I have cited no mere one or two texts against all the sects in my discussions of, of the whole of the Spirit to prove that He is the Spirit of God, glorified with the Father and the Son uncreated, changeless, and perfect. And in its turn, the argument against themselves that the troublemakers have invented about him has proved a failure. But again, let's devote our attention to the other arguments, for they say in turn, today, today do not have a sound understanding of the text that the Savior himself said, why calls do 
why calls thou me God? There is one God, go, there is one good God, and they were separated himself for the sense and subsistence of the Father. But this whole thing is foolish. If they do not think that the one who has done so much for us is good, who else is good? But what? What? But what could be worse than this? That the one who gave his life for, uh, for the sheep, who went willingly to the patient, although he was this impossible God, who secured the for, who secured for the forgive, who secured the forgiveness of sins for us, who were killed in all his kind, who of him, who of his own goodness broke such a number such brought such a numerous people in goodness to the Father that the promoter of goodness and the Lord of peace, the Father's good word begotten on high of the good Father, the giver of good to all flesh, the order of all goodness for men and all his creatures is not considered good by the Aryans. And since and and since they have managed to forget it, they do not know that he threw the questioner's word back at him in order to humble the overwinning, the overwinning insolence in him. A scribal type was boasting that he had extremely fulfilled in the requirements of, lo of the law. And to parade his own righteousness and goodness, he said, Good master, what more, what more could I do to inherit eternal life? And since he thought of himself as endowed with such great righteousness, the Lord wishing to ascribe all goodness to God so that no fleshly being would indulge in vanity, said, Why calls to me God? None is good, save God. By saying by saying this, by saying such a thing, when he was what he was, and as great as he was, he intended to humble the arrogance of the speaker with the with his supposed gratuitousness and expose what was in his heart for the for with the lips for with his lips he called him a good teacher but he did not abide by his good teaching and that he is good and that he is good he teaches us himself by saying many good works have i done among you for which of them do you do ye stone me do do to whom to whom is this not clear and plain as they particularly as many of his creatures are and are called god as a sacred scripture says, see here the sacred text tells of many good things. It says, Saul, Saul the son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, was a good man, and from the shoulder, from and from the shoulders and up and upward higher than all the people. And Samuel was good with his, and Samuel was good with the Lord and men. And the last word was better than the beginning, and opened the and open thy good teacher the heavenly but since these are created but since these are creatures and are shown by himself and by his and his creatures to be good how can how can how can he not be in indisputably good to confess that the order of their being is good but not to prolong the, dis the discussion of this i have spoken extensively of it everywhere i shall once again i shall once again go on to the text and give the explanation of his expression. But these people who will try anything cite some other text to show the suspicion that they that there are defects in their redeemer, if indeed they have been they have been redeemed. For for when the mother of the son of Zebedee approached Jesus and beget and beget and beg that the the one the one son should sit on his right and the other on his left. When he came in his kingdom, he told them, Ye know not what they ask. Are ye able to drink the cup that I shall drink of? And they say, Ye, yeah, we are able. And he said to them, Ye shall drink of my cup, but to sit on my right, but to sit on my right hand or my left is not mine to give, but is from the but is for them for whom is prepared for my father. Do you see? They, do you see? They say how he has no authority independent of the fathers, who has, who has the authority to give it, to give it, to anyone he chooses. And who in his right hand would think such a thing? If the son does not have authority, who does? For 
he says, the Father give life to the dead, and thus he had granted the Son to give life to whom he will, and all things have been delivered unto me of my Father. Who could have any further doubt but his sacred? Why say is meant to show that nothing is awarded from respect of persons, but in accord with merit. For to grant is the Lord's prerogative, but he grants to each according to his desires. Each who has done something like right receives from the Lord in accordance with his labor, not merely giving in his sole prerogative, but giving to one who has made himself worthy. For I venture to say that giving as such is not the Lord's prerogative, although he has the power, he does not give, he does not wish simply to give. Nor is it the Holy Spirit, although the Holy Spirit has the power to give, as the scripture says, to one is the to one is given wisdom by spirit, to another diverse kinds of tongues by the same spirit, to another the interpretation of tongues, and to to another power, to another teaching, but it is one spirit that divided to every man as he will, but he didn't say as he is directed, but as he will, but and the son give life to whom he will, and the father called uh, the, the father called whom he will to, to the son. And again, neither the father and the son nor the Holy Spirit cause gives provides and awards from respect of persons, but as said, but as each person conducts himself worthy, this is the meaning of it is not mine to give, but if you will but if you toil it will be prepared for you by my father, but I shall give you but I shall give at the end, for I am the life. And and I shall go right on to the others. They say, Why do you say that he is of the Father's perfect Godhead? See here, the Apostle says of him that God has raised him from the dead. If he needs God, if he needs God's help to raise him from the dead, then there is one person who raises him by his power, but the other reason, the one who is raised by the power of the one who is able to do this, is inferior. And how long must I, I tire much myself, and how long must I tire myself out with the silly ideas of the people of the of the of the people who give themselves headache, headaches who raised Lazarus who raised the widow son at nine who said Kumi Talita get up child to the daughter of the ruler of the synagogue on whose ne on whose name did the apostle call and the dead was raised I suppose the I suppose the apostles said to say this to show that all that all this had been done at Father's good pleasure by the will of the Son and will the and with the consent of the Holy Spirit, because of the because the apostles were in their dispute with Jews, who thought that they were that they were preaching apostasy from the God of the law, and because they had received from the from the Holy Spirit the knowledge that sex would would set. Christ in opposition to the will of the Father, but this is not said to show any defect or weakness or any difference between the divine words essence and the Father's. There are no differences. See in the in the first the instance how the angel how the angel describes him when he asks Mary and the others why seek ye the living among the dead? You see he who, uh, he who was alive had risen in God's head and flesh, he was not with the dead, and what does the angel say to them? He is risen, he is not here. He didn't say, God has raised him, and he and is he not here? But to show the power of the Savior, he, had, he said that he had risen if even living. And again, he himself taught his disciples before his passion, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered to be crucified, and the third day he shall rise again. And he did not say, God will raise him, but he was plainly serving before him the control of the resurrection of his power by saying, I have power to lay my soul down, and power to take it. But since he had the power, why couldn't he raise himself? 
when the apostle God God raised him from the dead, he raised, he said it to show that nothing in the economy of salvation has taken place without the Father's will. For the apostle himself says in another passage, even though he died from weakness, he lives by power. If I could not if I could only pick the brains of these people who know all about the scripture and find which weakness the only begotten had, the only begotten by whom the heaven has been spread out, by whom the sun was lit, by whom the stars shone, by whom all things have been made from nothing. Which weakness does the apostle mean? Isn't it the weakness the word assumed when he came in our flesh, putting it on so? as to build our weakness, as the prophets oracle about him sees. He took our weaknesses and bear our illness, he who is life and impossible God died, and impossible God died because of our weakness in the flesh which we had met, which were weaker with weaker yet, but he lives by power. For the word is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword. And that thus he died for weakness and lives by the power of his goodness, by, by of his Godhead, but he lives, but he lives in our flesh in which he accepted the patient, and it was because of the dispensation that the apostle said, God raised him from the dead to give token of the Father's good pleasure. The side still another text from the gospel according to Luke, one which is marvelous choice and every way and, and in every way most useful which text when the lord when the lord by his own will was about to enter upon the patient taking the disciples in the month at the time he at the time he went apart from them about a stone sketch and went and prayed and said father if it be possible let this cup pass for me that i drink it not nevertheless not what I will, but what you will, but you, but thou wilt. And first, once more, these people pretend and say, Do you see how he speaks coaxingly, and so I will, that is distinguished from the fathers by saying, Not I, but not what I will, but what thou wilt. How can it be the same sense they ask? When the when there is one will in him, but another in but another in the Father, are they are and they are ignorant to the entire meaning of this. For this is why the apostle said, "Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! And how could Christ be speaking of a will of His own besides the Father's will, when He Himself tells His disciples, My soul is troubled, and what shall I say, Father?" Save me from this hour, as though he were speaking in advance about the text in question, and using the words, what shall, what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour, and in, and in a way that was equivocal. He means, should I say such a thing as this, for, for this cause came I unto this hour. He came, not unwillingly, but willingly, for earlier he says, I have a cup to drink, and how eager I am to drink it. And I have a baptism to be baptized with, and what will I if I were already baptized? And if he is willing and eager, then and says that he has come for this purpose, how can he be serving that he has one will and the Father has another? And being kindly and willing, and, and willing to uh, spare Abraham's seed, since he would since he would be betrayed by Israel. But he was putting in a word for the people. However, it was the Father's will that his provision be executed in this way by the children of Israel, although they were accessory to their own betrayal of the Son, and not compared to it, to it by God, and the Son's will, and the Son's will was not different from the Father's. But it was essential that he saw this even here to ascribe the whole of the divine unity of the Father to the to the Father, leaving no division between the one between the one unity and human nature. And Arius as next text at next that being in agony while he prayed. Thus we find the gospel according to Luke and his sweat and his sweat was as it were drops of blood falling in the ground 
or to the ground. And there appeared an angel of the Lord strengthening him. Those nitpickers jump, jump up at once, as though they had, they had found an opening against an enemy. There and at. Do you see that he even needed the strength of angels, and angels strengthened him, for he was in agony. And they have no idea that if he did not have all these things, including not my will but thine, the human heart of Christ would have been an illusion. And if Christ had not been in agony and sweat had not poured from his body, there would be some sense in the theory and of the ability of the human heart of Manichaeans and Marcionists jump out since Christ would be apparition and not absolutely real. But he did all these things to make our salvation sure because he assumed everything that, he, that is ours and conscience said certain things is truth, not decide, not deceit, that reflection human reality. For example, he said, not my will to show the reality of his place, confound those who say he has no human mind and first the people who deny that he has flesh. For every divine world standing from standing from amid the source of darkness confounds the darkness but enlightens the son of the truth. See how much people see how much heaven material there is is in the, the saying. No sweat comes from bodiless beings. In this way he saw that his flesh was real and not apparition. And without a soul and mind, there can be a, no agony of, fle of a flesh that is united to the Godhead. But experiencing agony, he saw that he had soul, body, and mind at once, which is, he, which is why he could not show agony. And again, by saying, not my willing, but thine. He gave a mind truly human, human to do with without sin. For his Godhead is always in the Father, and the Father in the Son, and the Son in the Holy Spirit, perfectly possessing all things, and the Son's intent is no different from the Father's, nor the Father's from the Son's, or the Holy Spirit's from the Father's and the Son's. If the Son's, if the Son desires what the Father does not will, he will indeed be a merman, as you say, and from inferiority, subject to the will of the Father. But this is not the case, never think it. By speaking, by speaking of these of things that are reflective of human frailty, he shows the reality of his incarnation and the perfection of his human nature, so that he will be our salvation in every way, and we will not perceive one thing in place of another and be the proof, the proof of the truth. But as to his being seen to be but but as to his being seen to be strengthened by angels, how could be more proper than this? One more necessary. See, we have found the application of the passage in the great song written by Moses. Let my ear the rest be awaited as the rain, and solely afterwards, let all the sons of God worship him, and all the angels of God strengthen him. And not not so that not so that the angels may give him strength, he did not need the strengthening of the angels. They strengthen, they strengthen him in the sense of giving him the due acknowledgement of his strength. Indeed, for all our weakness, we too have often blessed God, often strengthened God, not because God needs our blessing, but we acknowledge the power of his blessing, and we say, giving the full, giving the full, full particulars, thine is the power, thine, thine the might, thine the honor, thine the glory, thine the blessing, thine the strength, thine the power. Not that we provide God with with strength by saying, Thine is the might, thine is thine the power, thine the blessing. Not that we have given God power, have blessed God, but by corroboration and confirmation we have confessed the power dynamin of God and ascribed the strength is seen to God. Thus the angel, thus the angel too was a mess at the, at the time, and astonished at the abundance of his master's loving kindness because Although he was God and was worshipped in heaven with the Father and served by his own angels, he submitted to such a depth of humil humiliation to as to come 
willingly by his own desire and assume flesh and not only this but also submitted to suffering even to consignment to the to the cross for his own creation the human race testing that even the death of the cross so that human can could win the trophy against the against death through him destroy him that had the power of death even the devil and the triumph over every rule and authority and so in a much man and all to glorify and praise his master as he stood in such an arena and with such remarkable deeds the angel said to him thine is the worship thine the might thine the power thine the strength is fulfillment of the words that moses has written let all god's angels give him strength and you see servant of servants of christ and son of god's holy church and octodos faith that is that there is nothing obscure of nothing in the sacred scripture everything has been written marvelously and marvelously fulfilled for our salvation however in the hostility to god's only begotten son and the holy spirit against like enemies think up all sorts of plans and subtle subtleties but far but far be it for but far be it from us to rely on human subtleties we must keep our mass on to glorify our master and not to conceive of any defect of in him for if the one who came to save all things has any defect how can creation be saved from its own defects again in the in the search for the text or order against the savior this new crop of Jews who are springing up again for they are votaries of the Jewish opinion and no different from Jews except nearly in name. They say like a first series or something else to endanger him in his talk. And as the gospel said, they said, on the cross, they said, he said, Eli, Eli, Lema Sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And you see, piteously begging and wailing, they say and saying, why hast thou forsaken me? And those who my, whose minds are torpid from the poison of Irish madness, and who have no knowledge of, the, of God, do not know that all the human frailties in the Lord are to be confessed as residing in this true human, human nature. In the first place, they do not release that they are jumping from one thing to another in their thinking about Him and have no fixed position. How can they, when they are not sound in mind, for they will sometimes call the Savior himself Lord Christ before, of, before all ages, Master of angels and archangels, to whom all things were made, principalities and authorities, angels and archangels, the heavens and all things, the earth, all humanity, and everything on earth, the sea, and all that is in it, how foolish of them to say such glorious things of him and not realize that he who in his God had as is before the ages and cannot age, before, age, before the ages cannot say such thing, such a thing as my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Here in the person of his God had he by whom he by whom heaven and earth were made and angels and archangels in in a world all things visible and invisible when do, when was the son forsaken for the, by the father and when was the son not in the father and the father not in the son for he came to earth as the son the divine word and yet he touched heaven and all his enemies were filled with his glory and when and he was in mary and was man, man and yet filled all things by his power how could such a person and one of such greatness say piteously, Eli, Eli, Lema Sebachthani, that is, my God, my God, why has forsaken, why has thou forsaken me? Is his, is his, in his divine nature, to it was he himself who said, I shall come again, and shall not leave you desolate, but I shall come, but I shall come unto you. And he says again in another passage, Verily I say unto you, all ye shall be offended because of me this night, and ye shall, and ye shall all leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, but the Father who begot me is with me. And again I go, and I shall send unto you the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, who proceeded from the Father and received of me. And again in another passage he says, I knock if any man 
open to me, we shall come unto him, I and my father, and make our abode with him. This is as much as to say that he is not forsaken by the father, but that the father is always with the son, just as the Holy Spirit is always with the father and the son. Well then, they say, why did he mean when he said, my God, my God, why did why has why has thou forsaken me? But who cannot see that the words are uttered in the person of his human nature, reflecting human frailty? His human nature said this to who to not by itself. He never spoke for a spirit, for a spirit divine nature and a spirit human nature, as though he were sometimes the one and sometimes the other. He spoke with his manhood, united with his Godhead as one holiness, and therefore possessed of perfect knowledge of in it. Appropriately, for the manhood which had been united with God and joined to one divine nature, but which now so but which now said it so its Godhead with its with its soul impelled to leave its holy body, it pronounced it pronounced the words the words in the person of the Lord man that is in the person of his human nature. For the divine nature as was about to accomplish all that all that the mystery of the person involved and descend to the underworld of with his soul and secure the separation of the separation there of all who had previously fallen asleep, I mean the holy patriarchs. Thus, when it was so impaired, Christ's voice said, in the person of the human nature speaking of the, to his divine nature itself, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But this has to be but this had to be in order to fulfill to him the prophecies the sacred scriptures had made of him to his own prophets. And it was in fulfillment of the words against Hades, which are said to Hades seemingly by the man, so that though the archon Hades and death intended to subdue a man, he would now unknowingly, since the holy God had conceived in the, in the soul, and Hades himself would be subdued and death destroyed, fulfilling the saying, Thou shalt not leave me so my soul in Hades, never shall thou suffer thine, the Holy One, so see corruption. For neither did the Holy Divine Word abandon the soul, nor was his soul abandoned his in Hades. Unceasingly, the Holy Trinity provides for all aspects for, of so great of mystery of, of so great a mystery, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. With the Son become fleshly, but the Father incorporeal, incorporeal. The Son, although unchangeable, incarnate by His own good pleasure and made flesh by the will of the incorporeal, incorporeal Holy Spirit. But all these provisions were made by the Holy Trinity for the salvation of human womankind. And so, in turn, He says in another passage, Why hast thou forsaken me? And here He says, I will never leave thee, nor forsaken thee. For his body needed to spend the three days in the grave in order to fulfill the sayings, I was free, and I was free among the dead, and they cast me, the beloved, uh, the beloved, out like a loaded, loaded carcass. This was also in fulfillment of those sovereign time, then holy one to see corruption, to show his holiness to his body, those shall not leave my soul in Hades, to show that his soul was not left in Hades either. For the divine word was in it throughout his children in Hades, in fulfillment of the apostles saying, It was impossible for him to be holy of Hades. And why does scripture say impossible? Except the dead and Hades was eager to detain a soul but that of God had. It was impossible for his soul to be detained, but if the, his but if his soul could be detained because of his Godhead, how could my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me, be said in the person of his Godhead? This saying was given the person of the manhood in terms of human frailty, teach us that Christ was incarnate truly and not in seeming of appearance. But what arose from that, other than the body that had fallen, that had fallen as a ship, he is risen, said the scripture, he is not here, and what was it that had arisen that had arisen except a body. It was a body then that was in the grave, but the soul had departed with the divine word. And again, 
Christ accomplished his perfect resurrection all together in the same Godhead, the same soul, the same holy body, then and then united his whole self in one spiritual union, one union of Godhead, one provision, one fullness. In the 92nd Psalm it says, The Lord had reign, he had put on com comeliness, meaning the divine was in three from the heavens into the world, having put on comeliness, that is, with the flesh that was born of a, of a virgin. For since he seemed of, of little account to his unbelieving beholders, comeliness was ascribed to him to show his power which, to the seeming weakness of the flesh, overcome the arbiter of death. For he arose, after abolishing the cause of sin, that is, death, and after in comely fashion, accomplishing the entire provision for our salvation, after doing away with corruption and the cruise, annulling the wit against us, and the covenant with Hades, and making all the provisions for the salvation of humankind, for direction, for directly after its, for directly after its days, the Lord had reigned, He had put on, He had put on comeliness. The Scripture makes makes a further addition and repeated, saying, "The Lord has put on and has been girded about with the, with strength." This is to show that His first judgment came from Mary but that his further clothing the second time came from the resurrection of the dead for as the second scripture has said he is the firstborn from the dead this is why he asked the further as to us by this by the second dawning of a garment and says the lord hath put on and had been girded about with strength for as a person with his waist belted tightens his garments about his loins, making his appearance trimmer and bringing the garment close to his own skin, so Christ girded, girded an uncomeliness, uncomeliness for the first time because of his sojourn here in the flesh, but the second time he put on strength, as the scripture says, by raising from the dead, his manhood is no longer subject to suffering, no longer subject to scourging, can no longer be crucified as the as the apostle of him. He is risen. He died not more he died he died not more, that had no more dominion over him. This is why it says he was gilded, that is, by uniting his flesh with one Godhead, a single oneness, one spirit, the divine and the bodily one as a spiritual whole in those who live in, in this solubile. Thus then he entered when dust were buried, proving his grossness eternal and his passing the possibility impossible, for he had suffered in the flesh while retaining his impossibility. Even so, after entering his dis after entering, he displayed bone and flesh. The mark of the lens of the and, ma and the marks of the nails was read by Thomas and seen by the disciples. But he entered where those were barked to show that for as men he had made one spiritual unity of the whole of saving work. And why do I tire myself with so much talk to say the same things? Often it not it knows it often is not grievous to me, but for my readers it is safe. Therefore, since I have often thought of the same thing for your safety, I have put it down as a way of getting to the safest attack of Arius' thoughts, words, and suppositions. And now that I have likewise the, discussed this expression sufficiently, let me, let me go on to the rest in order, but fully explaining most of their, most of their foolishness that, come, that comes to my mind to show from a few texts or even more that for one who has the Holy Spirit and has received a sober mind from the Lord, nothing cock, nothing cook can be suspected anywhere in the sacred scripture, and no sort of wealth in the, fa in the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Everything has been said. In truth, the, in the sacred scripture, with entire perfection and with provision for every need and for what is required in every passage for the, by the Lord himself in his and his holy apostles and prophets who was who has whom he has sent for indeed the lord made a prophecy of this when he said eli eli lemma sabachthani in hebrew the lord come to the cross was truly finishing the saying by saying what had been prophesied of him eli eli in hebrew as it as it had already been 
uh, as it had already been written and then in adding the companion phrase he said lema sebakhtani no longer in hebrew but in aramaic so as to begin so as to be so as to begin as it had been written of him by going on change the rest of the line and to another language this too he was doing to make a good provision by saying early early he meant to acknowledge that the word had been spoken of him by the prophet but by him by, by saying the rest no longer hebrew but in aramaic he meant to humble the pride to those who to of those who boast on him to bo of those who boast in hebrew but to declare that the other languages too are fit for the fulfillment of the oracles about him for he was not for he was now to extend the knowledge of himself to all nations not just the hebrews as this whole series of expressions in the 21st psalm indicates that indicates when in the in the person of his human nature it records all the frailty of his humanity but come to the cross he was completely fulfilling the description the description himself just as every point in the whole of the psalm one after another Com corresponds with humanity of Christ, which it he, which it is describing. It says, "And they parted my garments, they pitched my hands and my feet, they start and looked upon me, and as many other such things as are said, which cannot possibly apply to his Godhead, but are said in the flesh, although the Godhead impassibly in and in truth has made provision of them all, but they leap up again." Like mad like mad dogs in the grip of some frenzy, which, because of the frenzy, do not know they must and attack him first. When we tell him truly that the Lord in the gospel said of his disciples, "Those whom do, those whom thou hast given me, Father, I have kept in the world, and again make them to be one in me, and as I and thou are one," they reply, "Can you can you see?" that in the words I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and we two are one, is not speaking of equality, but of concord. How could this, how could the disciples be in him by his by equality? But they could be in him by concord. And God's and God's truth and God's truth reveals them completely at once, since the disciples could not do this, and it could not be said of them if the word had not come and set their place and united them in in him of adoption as sons thus everywhere in the songs of souls he calls his holy church neighbor address her with his holy voice of a rosa demonician and says rise up and come my neighbor my fair one my dove and do you see how he calls his neighbor but the church could not be called Christ's neighbor if he had not come from above and drawn near to her to her to the flesh with frailties like her, like hers, which he had taken so as to gather those who had obediently drawn near him and called the humanity which had become near to him to he, near to him his holy and spotless bride. And this is why the world why, this is why the word our Lord the only begotten here praise the father that his disciples may be in him so that when the disciples had be, have been sanctified he may join the kinship with him to the flesh which has become theirs by the by the father's good pleasure into a oneness of good uh, of a, of goodwill uh, and adoption and in the father's firstborn they may have enrollment with the firstborn in, in heaven unless anyone suppose that the son has been changed from his father's glory by donning the flesh to confirm the faith and knowledge of this truth so that no one becomes suspicious of his servants and is the brief of his hope he says he says that as that as i and thou are one so this may be one for i and thou are one since he is god of god and for sincere with the father in godhead and we are one is not indicative of a unit. He did not say, I am one, but I and thou, and we are one, is said to confront Sabellius and his school, since Sabellius thinks that Son and the Father are, 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 are since, uh, since Sabellius thinks that the Son and the Father are an identity, 
and the Father and the so and the Father and the Holy Spirit likewise. For that it, for that is why he said we are one and did not say I am one. This there are two perfects, a father and a son, but one because of equality, but there one Godhead, one power, one likeness. In the Godhead the Father and Son are one. In the manhood the Son and disciples are one. But to but to one but to one union or ad of adoption by his deigning to call the disciples to inevitably of his loving kindness. And once again, there has been a reputation of those who in vain think wrongly of their master. But let me pass this but let me pass this text by two and examine the rest. Since they spend their time on syllogisms and nonsensical reasoning, and although their men try to out argue God, the sophists, when they discover when they discover one text or another, jump right up. The prophet reproved them by saying, "Will someone trip God because you can trip me?" Well. What do the great, the great guys have to say now? The same talking point which I explained earlier, they now direct me at me in the form of a query. Did God beget the son by willing it or without willing it? I have shown that to, I have shown that to God there is no future, but that in Him all things are complete at once. He does not willing, He does not will a thing first before doing it. Nor does he do it without willing it or will a thing in preparation for it, and his preparation does not require will. Thus, with him is offspring, is always begotten with no beginning in time. It is always with a father as an offspring begotten and never ceases to be such. Since I have repeated the argument here, I again make the statement that the father did not beget the son either by willing it or without willing it, but in his nature which transcends will. For the son is the offspring of nature beyond will and above all conception and supposition. But this later day, but this later day disciples of Aristotle, as I said, in fact another argument similar to this one. For they have imitated Aristotle poisons, poison and abandoned the harmlessness and meekness of the Holy Spirit, as the Lord says, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall, and ye shall find hers for, yourself, for your souls. But these people have abandoned meekness and gone, for, and gone in for cleverness instead, taking up Aristotle and the other secular dialectians, Consentius. Consentius as, as they are, they go after the fruits of the Alexians, but know no fruit of righteousness ahead and have not been privileged, privileged to have the gift of the Holy Spirit within them. <coughs> now, here is what they say to us when we tell them when we tell them that the Son who is was who is was with the Father who is, since the Father said to Moses, Thou shalt say it unto them. He who is hath sent me, and again, the gospel says of the Son that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If they, if we tell them that He who is what who is was with Him, who is, they ask us, well now, was that was that which is begotten, or that which is which isn't? If He was, why was He begotten? But if He was not begotten. How come he was? And this is the product of the same foolishness which is preoccupied with philosophical Christians, as it had in the clothes, medals, medals with things in the heavens and does no good. For we shall ask them, What gave you this what gave you this idea of thinking these things? And if they tell us our mind requires us to examine them, we for our part shall say all right, you people tell, uh, tell us, are you reasoning about your own affairs or about God's? Then they say, we're, we're reasoning about God's own, our own initiative, initiative as rational beings. Well, isn't God different from your condition, not to, in, sense, in, sense, in a sense? 
Yes, they reply. Well, if God's nature is different from yours, then in the first place, your nature can comprehend things about God that are incomprehensible, and in the second, it's an impiety to model God on yourself in terms of your own essence. For in our, for in our own, for in our own case, something that does not exist is begotten, and then it's, and then it exists. For at one time we did not exist, but we were begotten by our fathers, who at one time did not exist either. So it was be understood from the beginning, back to Adam. But Adam was made from the earth, and at one time the earth had not did not exist. But the earth was made from nothing, since it don't always exist. But God always a father. But God was always a father, and whatever He was by nature, so He has begotten the Son. He begot Him as an everlasting Son, not as a brother to Him, but begotten of Him. He is like in nature, Lord of Lord, God of God, very God of very God. And whatever our conclusion of the Father, so he must conclude of the, of the Son. Whatever he believes of the Son, he must also hold of the Father. For the Son says, He that believes not on the Son as he believes on the Father, and honor not the Son as he honored the Father, the words of God abide, in, abide on him. As we find in the Gospel, and the idea of logic has failed in this turn. For God, who is incomprehensible, has begotten incomprehensible God before the ages and before time. And there is no in the far between Son and Father in perceiving a Father who simultaneously perceives a Son, and in naming Son, and in naming a Son who simultaneously indicate a Father. For Son is perceived from the Father, and Father is known from a, from a Son. How can there be a Son if He has no Father? How can there be a father if he did not beget the only begotten? When can the father not be called father, or the son not be called son, so that people can perceive a father who was without a son, and later, as though he had managed an improvement, be called a son, so that, after the beginning, the father could be, be called father, with the perfect God who needs no improvement of improving in Godhead, since they want to reject this curative drug and help giving antidote, the foundation of faith of God's holy church. They make one more pretense and say, why the type is sense? Why the son called co with the father? Which scripture, which scripture has spoken of co which apostles said a thing about in the sense of God, but they do not know the be but they do not, but they do not know that being hypostasis and a sense mean the same thing. Christ Lord, Christ in Lord in His being, and the brightness of the Father's glory and express image of His being. Thus He is the Father's essence, not an extra news, not an extra, not an extra news addition, not an extra news addition, periusia. To, the, to it, but this existent thing itself, after to toto on. As Moses said, as Moses said when he spoke to the children of Israel, He who is has sent me. He who is is that which is, but that which is is the existence, is the existent as its essence. On the other hand, coessential does not mean one, but co indicates the two perfect entities. Yet the two. Yet the two not, do not differ from each other, though are they different from their oneness. But if, but if we employ unscriptural, unscriptural expression for motive of pity, for motives of pity to pin the truth, there can be no refutation. What, whatever of heresy without the confession of the homoousion. As a snake has the smell of pitch. The exhalation of hot sun, the odor of lignite, and the incense of storax, so do Arius and Sabellus had the statement of the two confession of the homoousion. But even if we have employed such an expression, we shall tell them all the same, even though the expression is not in the sacred scriptures, indeed it is plainly impl implied in the law 
by the apostles and the prophets. For by two or three witnesses shall every good shall every word be established. It is the permissible for us to employ a useful expression for pity's sake to safeguard the holy faith. But what do you mean, people? Tell us, tell us, folks, what are what are you saying about the Father? Is the Father uncreated? Of course, they'll say yes. Who is so silly as to doubt is? What sort of what sort of not word suppose that the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is not uncre is not uncreated? You yourselves must surely admit that he is unbegotten, uncreated, and unoriginate. For he has no father before him, nor any limit to his years, nor any beginning of days, as the scripture says. Thus, if he has, if he has no beginning of time and on end of time, it is agreed and unconscionable he is uncreated. But now, does not scripture says, say to this of him? But even but e even if it is not scriptural, we are obliged for pity's sake referendly to think and say this of him. In the same way, even if it were not scriptural, we would not be compelled to speak of homo shown in our own language as an abbreviation, even though this might seem beyond us and the discussion of God may appear to be beyond our powers. But may the Lord himself pardon, not wishing to defend the Godhead, which has no need of our support, but we must speak with pity and think with pity, or we perish. Well then, the disciple of Arius give us an answer. We all agree in the saying that the Father is unbegotten and uncreated, and the expression is plainly a wonderful one. Where is it in the scripture then? So as the place, the law has not said it, nor the prophets, nor the gospel, nor the apostles. Thus, if we may use an unscriptural expression with, with pity, and it is our label when we said for the glory of God, who can accuse us even if the homoousion were not in the scriptures, since we have found a word which we have found a word with which we can confess the certainty of our salvation, but there are texts which confirm the omission when used with the help of pure reasoning, the ones I have list, listed above, and many others. I shall also pass the expression by, however, and with God's help, here are open their other expressions and devices to which they have given voice for the entrapment of the innocent. The same, the same people say further, along with all the texts which, by bad guess work, they debase from the, from the gospel and the apostle, as the apostle say next, and the apostle says next, the apostle says next, and it is found in the epistle to the Corinthians, in the chapter on resurrection. Then come, then come the end, when he shall have delivered the kingdom to God and his father when he shall have put down and all rule and authority and power. For he must reign until he hath put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be that shall be destroyed is death. Now when he said that all things are in subjection under him, it is manifest that he is accepted that hath put all things in subjection under under him. Now when all things are put in subjection under him, then shall the Son himself be subject to him, that had put all things under him, that God may be all in all. This is, this is on this passage, and with the customary hostility toward the only begotten, take his ineffable, glorious God head away, and say, foolishly, as I have often remarked, you will see that he says, then come the end, when he shall have delivered the kingdom to God, and his father, when he shall have put down every rule and all authority and power, for he must reign until he hath put all his enemies under his feet, but must until and when he shall deliver the kingdom at the setting of a time. And the blasphemous we say that these are indications of the cessation and the possession of the one who is reigning from the for he remains in power only until he delivers the kingdom of, to God and his father. And they say do not know and they, and they do not know the sense of the truth to begin with 
because of the backtaking of our flesh and blood by the only begotten his human frailties are dwelt and mentioned in connection with his human nature in addition to his glory but now but not without his effect his ever perfect and glorious Godhead, which needs an enhancement of its glory, but possesses glorification in itself and its perfection itself. He, he himself gives an account to the to, to an account of the two natures by saying of the more recent one, Glorify thou me, Father, with the glory that I have, that I had with thee before the world was. But when the Father proclaims the glory of the two natures, he says spiritually of the first. I have glorified it to show its infinity, but he says, and I will glorify it again of the new nature because of the incarnation. Now, for the clarification, even here, of the things the apostle, of the things of the things the apostle said when he said the third about Christ down into what into ways and wrote the son and wrote sons because of it of because of it divine his divine nature and until he shall deliver the kingdom unto god and his father because of huge because of because of his human natures beginning in in time for the divinity of the only begotten was always with the father that is the only begotten divine word who has proceeded from the father without beginning and not in time otherwise works the fulfillment of the angels word of the angels words the spirit of the lord shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. For he said, Thou shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Jesus, to Mary, to show that the divine one had descended from on high, and had taken flesh in the virgin's womb, and perfectly became, become, become man. And so as not to separate his human perfection from his divine perfection, he and he and taught her with the, with the, the addition of the word also, Therefore also, that which shall be born of thee shall be called holy, the Son of God. Then he said, Then he says, God will give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob until the ages, and of king and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now what shall those who do not know the life giving scripture say, given each Given that each of these is the opposite of the other, he must reign until some time. He shall reign over the house of Jacob until, until the ages, and he did not say merely unto the age, but unto the ages. And again, we ha when he shall have delivered to the, the kingdom unto God and his father, standing in contrast with of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And yet both have said such things of the Lord and Christ and both, are entire, entirely trustworthy, the angel Gabriel is holy being, and the holy apostle inspired. Then the scripture, which is always truthful in all things, contradicts itself, never think it. But as I said, as the old said, because of the implications of the manhood, Christ possesses all its natural accompaniments. accompaniments. For, if he, for if he ever hands his rule over to anyone, he is not ruling now but if he is not yet ruling who is that who is it that he is worshipped continually by the angels and archangels before enduring his advent in the flesh as the scripture says of him when he bring the first begotten into the world it says angels of god worship him and again he sat down at the right hand of the father and again unto him ever if he needs salvo of things in heaven and things in in earth and things under the earth does he who is, does he who is worshipped by all always rules what shall we say then since the son who was always from the beginning now and forever has not yet handed the rule over to the the rule over to the father is the father excluded from his rule never think it the son is ruling together with the father and the father with the son and the and the holy spirit What are they saying? When he delivered the kingdom to God and his father, does he, he does he himself choose to rule? Never think it. Where is the application of his king? The application of his kingdom of his kingdom. There shall be no end. 
he shall deliver the kingdom is sweet to so that nothing which has been found or to be or to be found in the son to opposes or differs from the unity of the father and from the one with the and and from the one will of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. For even here we see that when he shall have delivered the kingdom to God and his Father, when he shall put down all rule and authority and power, he said of the Son in the sense of the Son himself delivering the kingdom and putting down all rule and so on. And he must reign until he had put all his enemies under his feet. He said of the Son doing all things, possessing all sovereignty and authority, and with the kingdom delivering his subjects to the Father. Then, the next, he again switches to another person, that of the Father in turn subjecting all things of, to the Son, and says, and says, He has put all things in subjection under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. But he is no longer speaking only in the person of the Father, or only in the person of the Son, but right in between the persons of the Father and the Son, and he says, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. But when he says that all things have been put under him, and so on, if I could only ask them in whose person that he said is it. For the profundity of God mysteries charges the flesh spiritually. The fleshly men receive not the kings of the spirit, for they are the foolishness unto him. For here, if the father is speaking to the son, the action is defective. The son made things subject to the father, but if when he said that all things are put in subjection under him, he said the, perfect, the person of the son, that though, in, that though is unsatisfactory because it assumes futurity in God, either in the father or in the son. But who is it that he is saying that all things have been made subject, for it has not said. When they say it had said, they, when they say it could apply either to the angels or all to the subjects, but since it has previously shown the, the son the son subjecting all things and handing them over to the father, and the father subjecting all things to the son, careful as secrets are left are left with the persons with the person of the Holy Spirit, and therefore, after the person of the Father and the person of the Son, the Scripture has unequivocally given an intimation of the Father of the Holy Spirit, who was, who was declares and teaches the truths about the Father and the Son, to keep the full knowledge of the Trinity and of the additional glory of Christ's human nature from being defectively stated. Then he says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is dead, but the one who is destroyed has been curbed and can no longer do what, what, he, what he does, or even exist, he has been destroyed. Well, what have those who have no knowledge of the scriptures to say about this? This is, if this were the text said, we must suppose that the son will be chased to rule. But if we say this, we shall commit an impudent thing to, to rank him, with, the, with God's subjects, particularly after he chooses to do what he has been doing. Where is the thought? No man who believes that and truly hopes in Christ will think of saying or hearing anything and becoming his glory, as the Aryans really think that, he, that they can. That they can. The sacred scripture teaches everything by saying, when he said, all things are put in subjections under him, it manifests that he is accepted who had put all things in, in subjection under him. What, but when all things are put in subjection under him, then shall also the Son himself be subject unto him that had put all things under him. This means that the statement was the originally made by the angel, linked with it by the similarity of the expression, fittingly and with perfect clarity reveals the statement's whole meaning. The angel said a similar thing, the mentioning the son to begin with, and then with an addition which referred to the human nature, showing the union of the natures, therefore which is born of thee shall also be called holy, the son of God. For this and similar reasons, because that which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Son himself will be subject to him that hath put all things under him. 
so that Christ flesh will no longer believe, be fleshly in power but united in one union with the Godhead and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit of whom of whose kingdom there shall be no end. And it is since he had reason that that God may be all in all has it has had its inception for his flesh has been spiritually united with his one Godhead. But since he says do this in rem remembrance of me until the coming of the Son of Man, and ye shall see him in like manner in like manner as ye have seen him taken up. Then finally, when all things have been fulfilled and nothing left unfulfilled of those things that are to be brought back to his Godhead, the prophecy that God may be all in all will come true. But the text says, God so that there may be no distinction between the manhood and the Godhead. For is though for is for there is no distinction to make poly, to make politici, politicism impossible, for there is one glory. For the Son is now not is not now, but of the Father's control like a warlord, or under his control like a slave with no freedom of action or action of, of action, he is the one begotten of the Father, of the same nature and the same Godhead. Nor will he be subject to the Father, then from the effect of inferiority, or by compulsion or cessation of rule, but as a true begot but as true only begotten Son, who rules with the Father forever, and who both elevates the whole creation to a single single oneness and honorable reward and teaches this to his holy church, so that God may be all in all. For, for there is one Godhead, one sovereignty, and one glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with the Father fittingly honored by the Son as a true God, as a true Son, by the Holy Spirit as not different from the Father and the Son. And let this exclude even the words, even even the words of those who ha who blaspheme God's God, God, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the thoughts of the enmity to the Son and the Holy Spirit, and once more we have detected their evil devices and thwart them. Once more, they select certain expressions from the Gospel and say, Why can the Son do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do? And they do not understand what it what he said at the beginning of the scripture. Although it was certainly the Father, he did not create something first, and the Son manufactured to something afterwards. If which heaven did the Father make all by himself? For the Son to take the same of the first heaven as his model and manufactured to something like this, like it. But none of it, but none of the inventors of evil can prove this. In the beginning, create in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth, but he says at the same time, in the beginning at the creation, let us make men in our image and after our likeness. When he did then say, come here and I'll show you how to do it. And it says, and God made the man, and it say, and he didn't say, God made him and sought the son how, the, how to make the man. The son was not ignoramus that he needed to learn a trade, a trade first and then put it into practice. But when our Lord had come in his turn, put on, the fle put on, fle put on flesh, become man and live in our midst, he conversed with the Jews, was taught that he was abolishing the Father's commandments and desired to elevate their minds so that they would not attend to his manhood alone, said, The Son doth not, but that which he said to the Father do. His intent was to show that the work of the Son is the work of the Father, and that the Father is pleased with the Son's execution of his work, is of, all, of all his work. And they will also be hurried like this about each of other things in, the, in this run, in this run, when they blunder into them like beasts and are confounded by the lightning flash of the word at truth, flash the lightning and scatter them. Send for them, arose and confirm them. For we have to deal with the following text, which they select next, and quote from the for the from the gospel. For the Father loved us and sought him all that he has, that all that he doth, and greater works that the the result he saw him. Ye may marvel, and again, the Father raised the dead and give them life. 
Likewise also, though the Son give life to whom he will, and further, the Father judge no, no man, but hath given all judgment to the Son, that all honor that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father, but take no arius, but take not arius at the end of my debate with you. Of the conclusion to which the discourse, discourse has come, Christ did not say that some may say that some may yes, that some may say yes and some say no, but that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. Stop dishonoring the Son, then as not the dishonor and so as not to dishonor the Father, if you choose to ascribe an inferiority in the Son or suppose some defect in Him, does the supposition extend to the Father as well? For it is the part, for it is part of your impudence that you think mainly of the Son and do not honor Him as you as you honor the Father. Why indeed does the Father also give Him this? Tell me what He says, wonder man. That the Son may give life to whom we will. He did not say to whom he is taught. There were two particular reasons why. Why the Son needed to receive all this from the Father, though not to be less than the Father. First, it was to direct our minds upward to a single oneness of Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and not to lower the human reason to divisions and multiply of gods but to raise it to a single oneness. But second, it was for the transformation of the glory of Christ's human nature and its union with, with his Godhead. For since he came to gladden his disciples with the promise he gave, there is some standing here that will not test that, will, that till they have seen the Son of Man coming in his glory. And on the eighth day, as the Gospel says, or as the other says, after six days, for the Evangelists do not say some things in place of other of others, but although there is one exact truth, it is constantly safe God so that people will have no excuse to stumble at the senses. The mind of man is continually bent on evil from his youth. Part of the day on which the Savior say said this was left over, and the evangelists counted from and the evangelists counted from that day and hour. If the day was declining about the noon hour or the tenth, and again, since the since the thing since the thing was done at about the third and or fourth hour or eighteen eight days, eight day, this day was called the eighth day, the eighth. But the other evangelist provides a safeguard and says, after six days, he did not count on the day when the Savior said the word of to disciple to the disciples of the day on which he did the work but six full days in between. But since I have come to this to the discussion of the saying, I shall give the explanation, he took Peter and James and James and John broke them into the into the mold, and was transfigured, and his countenance shone as the sun as the sun. His countenance in the flesh united with his, with his Godhead, and his right man shone white as snow. Plainly, this man, the flesh taken from Mary, which was our, of our stock, and he was changed to glory, the added glory of the Godhead. The honor, perfection, and heavenly glory which his dress did not have at the beginning, but which it was receiving here in its union with the divine world. In this way, understood, understand the words we quote earlier. He had given all judgment to the Son, because he has given him authority to give her, to give to whom his who, to whom he will. So, as as proof, first of all, of the unity of the divine nature and of its one will, as which, which uh, the, if its one will, which ascribes the hold of goodness to the Father and to one first principle and Godhead. Well, there are three perfect entities, but one Godhead, the Father, Son, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it's done the human nature of Christ, which, along with the divine nature, receives the gift, authority and perfection of one which is granted it by the Father and the Son, and which has been united in the single spiritual oneness of Godhead. And we, and we have barely managed to get past this stormy pass, and through the, his whole attack by savage beasts, the white, the white having of the billows and the fearful, fearful forming of the seas, 
because in my ed in adequacy I receive the power I receive the power and the grace from God I have burned my opponents spears spears and shields thanks to the right reasoning in my mind have broken the bows of the opposition and have been victorious over the serpent and many headed ugliness of the hydra so that I can sing I can sing the song of triumph in God. Let us sing to the Lord for his glorious for his glorious manifest manifest horse and rider had he hauled into the sea. I have broken the dragon head above that water that goes lovely of which the this present day fellow hicks with the Jews would have no part. The prophet had them in mind when he said, because he refused the word of Siloam that God softly and preferred to have the king Rezin and Tabil, the son of Remalia, behold, the Lord bring upon you the mighty water of the river, the king of Assyria, and so on. But we have received the help in the Lord, the, the, the saliva, the saliva spat on the ground, but his true flesh. And with the spittle have received the clay smeared on our eyes, so that we, who were once in ignorance know now know the truth and have gone and was in Siloam which means descent. That is, we have was in his human nature and perfect Godhead, and since we now see we no lo we no longer deny the Lord, even though the practitioners of Arius and successors of the Jews cast us out of the synagogue, for like the Jews, the Arians have agreed that whoever confess the Lord must, the Lord must be cast out of the synagogue, showing that one who has recovered his sight in reap in is a re, is a reproach to those who cannot see. For if the synagogue were all were not all blind, they all would reject someone whose eyes had been opened. Let us thank the Lord then. We have recovered our sight and confess the Lord and if we perform the work of the commandments, have hit the on hearts that we have trod up upon trod, that we have trod upon the serpent and broken the head of the dragon by the power of God, to whom be glory, honor, might and might, the Father in the Son, and the Son in the Father with the Holy Spirit, unto ages of the ages. Amen. But leaving this Hydra we have slain, with its seven heads, and many segments, let us go on to the rest as is well beloved, calling on God our constant help to take the same care of us of any who desire to read to read this work for the good of those who have been beaten and the correction of those who have already joined the ranks of the devil.